just setting up the stream widget data. Alright, looking good. How's everyone doing today? We all good out there? Hear the uh, voice chat alright, hopefully? I had to change out the microphone cable, so... Uh, I'm assuming it hasn't changed any of my settings. We'll find out. I think we're looking pretty good. You guys hear me all right? Yep, yep, yes, yep, cool, great. Just what I want. Ah, cool. All right, guys, what are we gonna talk about today? I um, pulled up for the sake of it the uh, made to order from Games Workshop. Just thought I'd have a quick scroll through that, see if we have anything interesting in there. Uh, good morning to those of you in the UK uh, and in North America. I'm doing it a little bit uh, earlier today than I normally do, just so that people from my own country can actually get on, because normally I do these streams about 1 o'clock in the morning here. I always liked that Karamazov model, I just never really did anything with it. I think it would make a really good Mechanicum Abeyant if you converted it up correctly. Oh well, one year maybe. Let's see, Tidewall Gun Rig. These tower fortifications look universally terrible, so I'm fine with seeing them go. Hang on, the Adeptus Titanicus Warlord Battle Titan is on made to order? What the hell? <laughs> Blood Crushes, Hematrop Reactor, Void Shield. Why are these things on made to order? Funny story, the Void Shield Generator. Um, I believe this one is plastic. It's plastic fantastic. The original Void Shield Generator looked, from the outside, looked identical to this was made of resin. So they bought out this resin void shield generator. It cost an absolute fortune. And they were only a limited release, limited edition type deal, and there was only a certain amount sent out to stores. So the scalpers went out and bought shitloads of these void shield generators. And then they started popping up on places like eBay for six, seven hundred dollars because they were really good in seventh edition 40k. And it was only after people got really upset about this, Games Workshop turned around and went, uh, okay, maybe this isn't a good idea, and started making them in plastic. But it took many months before they got around to doing that. Ugh, why can't this thing go out of production? <laughs> Space Marine Heroes. It's a chaplain and a cataphracty Terminator Lord. Webway gate. I think the webway gate is actually a really nice piece of terrain because using just two or three of those, you can really pimp out a table to look very, very much like an Eldar world. I don't suggest, however, using all that exodite terrain because it was terrible. So, Augustus, you want to know about using Medusan Immortals? You've just started Iron Hands in 30k. Well, I can help out with that. I myself have run them many times, so we'll open up the Horus Heresy tab. Well, that's loading up. We'll have a quick look here. Black Templar sword. I always wanted to make a nice Black Templar army. Thing is, I was no good at painting black or white at the time. <laughs> now I think I could do a quite good job of it. So, Iron Hand, Medusan Immortals. What I'll do, I'll also have to bring it up. Uh, it'll be in Black Library. Or Warhammer Digital. It'll be in one or the other. Um, 
their FAQ section because they have changed them a bit. Maybe Warhammer Digital. This is the thing, you used to be able to just go onto these websites, look at the product, and then directly find the um, FAQ that was related to it. Good luck if you're playing against Cat. <laughs> nah, Cat's really cruisy. Um, he does not give a crap about if he wins his games or not, and he will deliberately throw himself under the bus. He really couldn't care less, um, which is good. It's refreshing. Where are the FAQs? Right down the end, I believe. Well, actually, they might have put it in the middle. Alright. Medusa and Immortals. Now, these guys can be run in a right of war, which actually makes them troops' choices instead of elites. Um... Essentially, they're Legion Breaches. They've got this really weird rule called Gun Them Down, but we'll go through sort of their stats in that first. So, they've got the standard Space Marine stat, you know, weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength, toughness, initiative, all four. Leadership bait. What's interesting is they have, of course, the boarding shield and power armor, which means they have the feel no pain and hardened armor. So, if they get hit with a flame armor or a template weapon, they get an armor save against it. Then they get to re-roll that armor save if they fail. On top of that, they have Feel No Pain, which is now a 5+. It used to be a 6+, which was terrible. So they're pretty resilient. Unlike regular breaches, you don't have to throw an Apothecary on them. And they work really well if you use the Stone Gauntlet Rite of War in Shattered Legions and make them toughness 5. Because being Iron Hands, incoming uh, ammunition that's fired at them drops down by minus 1 strength. So you have bolt guns wounding them on sixes, which means they are insanely tough. Uh, you can add 10 addition, uh, additional Medusa Immortals for only 12 points each, which is really cheap. It's really good. Uh, and yes, any of them can take a Volkite Charger. It's actually a pretty good option on them. The thing is, though, it really depends how you want to use the squad. If you're running the Rite of War, where you can have multiple squads of these as troops choices... They can sit on objectives and just hold them all game. They are very hard models to move. Um, I don't really suggest exchanging their bolt gun for a chainsword because the rules is written the boarding shield isn't like a combat shield. You don't get to actually get a bonus attack if you have a boarding shield, pistol, and close combat weapon because the boarding shield actually takes up that arm. Uh, for every five models in the squad, one immortal may exchange their bolt gun for one of the following. This is where it gets funky. I generally don't take any of the options. Um, but I was running a single squad of immortals and running them in a Shattered Legions list with white scars. And they were very much the anvil, and the scars were the hammer. That said, the flamer and the melter gun are both great choices. The las cutter is probably in the running for worst weapon in the game, so I think you should avoid it at all costs. And then you have the graviton gun, and the graviton gun is fantastic on tactical support squads and legion slash gorgon terminators. It is, however, terrible on squads that don't have relentless because it is a blast template, and it means you don't really get the whole advantage firing the thing when you have to move and fire it and you can't fire it so not my pick for the best weapon personally I like to upgrade the sergeant to a power fist to artificer armor and give him a cyber familiar that way yeah you're spending a bit of points on the sergeant but he's basically a one wound console at that point uh, you're talking 
Strength 4, Toughness 4, with minus 1 to the incoming weapon refired at him. He's going to get a 5 plus invulnerable save out of close combat, a 4 plus in close combat. He has 2 up armor save, and he's fighting with a power fist. Also, thanks to the boarding shield, they have defensive grenades. So if they're charged, the enemy gets no charge bonus. I do think the Thunder Hammer is a complete waste of points, though. Uh, so stick with the power fist if you're going that way. As for their special rule, uh, essentially... There's a couple things, so I'll read through it. You may not attempt to make sweeping advances. Instead, or instead of rolling for the sweeping advance, you may choose to have them fire at the enemy as they're running off. However, wounds that the blast special rule may not be fired when making a gun them down attack, and any type of template weapon inflicts D3 automatic hits on the fleeing unit, which is good if you've got flamers, because it's going to do more than the rest of your shooting. Um... Because essentially you're snap shooting at the enemies. The attack might only be made as long uh, as the target falls back. And Medusa Immortals will no longer be engaged in combat. After making a gun them down attack, the Immortals may not make a consolidation move at the end of the assault phase. It's kind of craptacular. Generally, uh, yeah, I use Immortals to hold objectives. Melter Bombs are great on the Sergeant. I think the thing that lets them down over regular breaches is regular breaches, the entire squad can take melter bombs. These guys can't. Um, still, I think the fact that you don't need to put apothecaries in the squads, they have built-in feel-no-pain, they're very tough already. Uh, they have some good uh, bolt gun replacements in the flamer and the melter gun, which regular breaches don't have. Definitely gives them a versatility, and the sergeant is just rock hard in this unit. Uh, the reason you can take a cyber familiar is because he's a character, and he's in Iron Hands, and all Iron Hands characters, whether it's a lowly squad sergeant or the highest of Praetors, can take a cyber familiar. How I like to play it, uh, yeah, generally, stick 10 blokes on an objective, sit on the objective, and tell the enemy to come move you off it, and they will struggle. <laughs> okay. Tyler Frost says, I'm thinking of collecting a Night Lord's army in Heresy. Are destroyers a viable option for the 8th Legion? Yes, they are. Uh, especially if they're jump pack destroyers, because jump pack destroyers will count as bulky, which means you're going to get a buff to outnumbering your enemy. Also, you're going to have rad grenades. So not only are you wounding enemies uh, one easier than you normally would, because they're going to be at minus one toughness, but on top of that, if you outnumber the enemy, you're going to be getting plus one to hit into wound rolls, thanks to uh, your Merciless Fighters special rule. So, Destroyers, really strong. Also, they've brought out a Rite of War for Destroyers. Um, I don't know if it's for the Night Wars. I know they brought out one for the Dark Angels. Which, to answer a question later down, yes, I have um, seen the Night Wars and Dark Angels leaks. I don't think... I'll talk about them too much because I'm going to wait until I've got the book physically myself and really read through it in order to give a fair accounting of what's good and what could be bad. By the way, those who are just joining, you haven't missed much. Uh, we've basically just spoken about it, Medusa and Immortals. What Legion is more comfortable to play in More Forgiving, Night Wards or Word Bearers? Um, more Forgiving is definitely Word Bearers. Um, nobody should feel comfortable with themselves, though, if they're playing either of those legions, because they are dirty, dirty legions. But what makes the word bearers very forgiving is the rules are pretty much vanilla across the army. There's no weird stuff you have to constantly be checking and back-checking and taking into account. The consoles are reliable. Um, the 3d6 morale checks, picking the lowest 2d6 as your result, is pretty damn good, very reliable. Whereas the Night Wards, um, you have to pick your fights. If you lose characters, then the whole army starts taking pinning checks and morale checks and stuff. Uh, when you lose a combat, you fall back an extra inch. There's a lot of extra stuff you've got to take note of when you play Night Wards. Lord Nathan asks, Hi Maka, what do you think of Pravians and Vorax? I mostly run my Pravians with Vorax, in fact. A lot of people like to run their Pravians with uh, Castellax, 
but by taking Vorax, you can give them the outflank special rule with your Pravian. And even though he personally is slow and only moves 6 inches, outflanking with a bunch of uh, poison ammunition loaded rotor cannons and a couple of IRAD cleansers on some Vorax is terrifying to the enemy because, well, you can carve up any parking lot they have or really force them to turn a lot of guns or troops back in that direction. So pretty handy, yeah. Angus Wilson Spillane asks, just curious, not on topic, but what is the 30k view on head swaps from third party producers? Just curious as I have plans for a large Iron Warriors force and love head swaps. Yeah, go for it. No one cares. Um, people only care about the Primara stuff when it's obviously Primara stuff and no extra effort has gone into it, uh, which is a point I have to keep reiterating to people. I'm not really the Lord of Salt at the end of the day. I want people to really enjoy this hobby and get the most out of it. That's not going to happen if you're just taking Primaris and painting them in Horus Heresy colours and pretending they're Horus Heresy space marines, is it now? <sighs> Let's see. i got to ask Maka. I've got an idea for a Night Lords theme. Go for it. Uh, Tans Man says, If you were a Primarch, would you side with the Emperor or Horus? Uh, really tough one there because the Emperor is a dick but Horus is serving people who are pure evil. Jeez. Uh, uh, I guess if I took an oath to the Emperor, I would try and uphold that oath. I'm big on honour, that's about it. I've got a $10 super chat from Tunguska uh, saying, I just remembered that the Word Bearers Praetor they previewed Maybe they threw away the mold and hope we forgot about it because it's the most painful 40k looking model I've seen for Heresy. <laughs> they previewed a lot of models this year that just haven't come to fruition yet. Uh, example of that might be the... Um, they've got the Soul Tarvitz model. Yeah, that's, that's probably an important one. The Dark Angels and Night Lords consoles have both made their way to us now. We know the Contacar Terminators are coming. So yeah, that's all a thing. Yeah, that that model is <laughs> Yeah, it looks it looks straight out of 40k Chaos Space Marines. Which is a bit of a shame because with most of the models released to this point in the Heresy, um, I will in fact show you different models from the Heresy to try and prove this point. I will go to uh, just we'll go HQs, shall we? So unit type, uh, characters. Now we don't want the Lords of War, so ignore those. But jeez, uh, how can I get rid of the Lords of War? Um, where's Force Org? Go Force Org. HQ. Okay, so. With the obvious exception of the Knights Errant, because they're in uh, that very special Melkador armor, which is post sort of heresy, if you look at each and every one of these characters, they're almost entirely characters that could be used at any point during the Great Crusade. Obviously, the Sons of Horus stuff is very much a late Great Crusade, but uh, out of the Space Marines available, even Veldor... Archmagos, Dracovic, and the fact that all these marines are standing on top of uh, destroyed dreadnoughts. But for all you know, that could be a destroyed dreadnought of his own legion he's walking over that's being destroyed on the battlefield. Um, but all these characters could fit in at any point in the in the Great Crusade. They're not necessarily Horus Heresy specific. Nothing marks them out of, as of that time period until you get to those word bearers because the word bearer console um, that was previewed is full on tattoos all over the face covered in witchy poo diagrams that kind of thing uh, to an extent there are characters like that such as um, geez let me look uh, Zadu Wayak and the Blade Slaves great band uh, they only got to number 3 on the billboard He's obviously pretty damn far down the demon path, but most of these guys aren't. Uh, 
even Death Shroud, Callus Typhon, Khan the Bloody. None of them are particularly... These guys are definitely traitors and are not fighting for the Imperium, but against it. Even if you look at Erebus and Corferon, like Erebus, you would say, would be pretty on, much on the extreme end of what is considered okay prior to the heresy. Whereas that new Werber console, he looks like he's more evil than Erebus, and Erebus is probably the biggest dick of them all. <laughs> Alright, actually, did Rick says, Hi, I want to start a 30k force with Emperor's Children Army and want to know the best way to get basic infantry. Should I buy kits from Games Workshop, store, or is there anything else I should look at? Uh, look, no matter what you buy or from where, it's going to be pricey when it comes to some sort of power armor. You're probably just best off, though, trying to find a cheap set of the trailer at Kel's or Burning Prospero Tactical Squad sprues on something like eBay. Um, you can even go googling Mark IV or Mark III power armor on different sites and see what you get. Um, just beware, there is a lot of recast out there if it's in resin. But generally, that's all you'll need to get into the game. The super chat from DRT is King. I've been waiting for that Saul Tarvitz model forever. Yeah, people like Cat have been waiting since book one. Cat's a big Saul Tarvitz fan. Doesn't like the model though. S says, so would 40k possessed workers Gel Vorback? Uh, completely different scale. Gel Vorback are on a 40mm base. So if I look at Zadu, Layak, and the Blade Slaves again, um, Zadu himself is huge for a Marine, so he won't do. Um, geez, I'll just type it in, hang on. Gel Vorback. I don't know if there's a picture of him beside a regular power armor. It doesn't look like it. But those are Terminator-sized bases. These guys are big. Um, but unfortunately, the latest possessed models released for uh, 40k are huge. They're on like 50, 60 mil bases almost. So they're too big for this. Um, and the old possessed models from 40k are too small for this. I wouldn't object, though, if someone used either of those models to represent them, though. That's the question. Angus Wilson Spillane says, Hey, just personal question, but you mentioned you were in the Oz Army, and I was just curious to your rank unit, as I'm also curious in ADF. I was a Lance Corporal. I started out in RAMI, the Royal Australian Electrical and Mechanical Engineers, and then after several years doing that, went off and got dual cord in a unit known as SOER, or IRR. Uh, did that for a bit, and then decided I'd had enough, and left. Tansmans asks, were you a fan of the Night Lord books? I never read them. Uh, the only Night Lord stories I've read are the ones in the Horus Heresy by, say, Aram Dembski bowden for example, with Savage Weapons, or the Night Lord stuff about Thramus that we get in the Dark Angels novels and the Unremembered Empire. Augustus asks, now this is an odd question, I want to use Metal Typhus model in 30k. Is that all good for Death Guard, or would that not be tournament legal? Uh, we don't really do tournaments, so that's perfectly fine, I think. I wouldn't complain, just as long as you do a bit of conversion and make it look like it belongs in the time period, go for it. Shouldn't have to look like, um, uh, the model is perfectly fine as just that, uh, a model. Uh, this is the 30k Kellis Typhon, of course. All you need to know about him is he has the Man Reaper and he's got the Destroyer Hive. He's got a little uh, hand flamer on the back of his left wrist with a tiny little fuel tank to propel it. So converting him, uh, a version of him, out of the old white metal Kellis Typhon or Typhus, go for it. Don't let me hold you back. GTRK says, Hey Maka, have you seen any leaks from Book 9? Yes, I have. I've seen them all. The Dark Angels seem a little too strong. They have a right of war for every wing of their legion, a better beat stick Primarch than Lehman slash Horus slash Sang, and a lot of special snowflake units that do things better than those of other legions. 
Well, that's a tough one. I thought they would go down the approach of making them very vanilla. That the Dark Angels were the first of legions, and my understanding from the stories is that they're the one legion that sort of embodies the attributes of the Emperor the most, the least genetically deviated from the basic uh, clone of the Emperor that is the Lion. Whereas what's actually happened is their rules are pretty much terrible for a legion, and they've overcompensated for it by making these insanely strong specialist units. But there are exceptions to that. Um, if I go into the Horus Heresy and we go into the Dark Angels, strangely listed under Loyalists, and I'll open up some of these units. They haven't given us the sword and board unit yet, although their rules are interesting. They're basically just a command squad. Um, the Cenobium, we'll open that up. And the Interrupters, we'll open that up. So famously, this unit released with multiple typos in it, which uh, I since had to go along and fix up. Well, I didn't fix them up. I suggested that there was certain problems, and then Forgeworld came along and changed several of these lines to suit themselves. But anyway, uh, the Knight's Cenobium are 45 points per model. That's not too crazy, but then you've got to look at the war gear. Okay, weapon skill 5, slightly more than normal. That doesn't require extra points. Tyrannic Greatsword and the Plasma Caster built in is strong. Stubborn built in is good, because they're never going to get a morale penalty in close combat. The Adamantium Will means they're going to be pretty good at tanking... Uh, psychic attacks targeted at them, especially if they have their own librarian in the unit, you'll be talking like possibly three up denies, depending on the level of Psyker. Um, you know, Shadow Legion with Thousand Suns, holy crap. The Order's Exemplar, though, is huge as a special rule. Uh, the ability to give the whole squad Thunderhammers for free is brokenly strong. Um, I still think a 50-50 mix of Thunder Hammers and Swords is the way to go, because the Swords will allow you to just chop down anything with multi-wounds. Yeah, they'll get a save a lot of the time, but if they fail a single save, they're dead. The Thunder Hammers will just allow you to instant kill things like Salamander's Fire Drakes, for crying out loud. Um, the Order Exemplars are really strong abilities. I would say that for 45 points, these are Side by side with the segment, the best Terminators in the Horus Heresy. The segment are cheaper, and they've got their psychic powers to boost them, but the war gear on these guys, like, the segment at least have to cast the force power and just have force weapons, which are generally either low strength um, and don't have the AP to ignore your armor, or they're slightly higher strength and do have the AP to ignore your armor but strike last. These guys are swinging with Tyrannic Greatswords of Initiative, which are plus two strength, AP three, instant death. Uh, yeah. So, Knight Cenobia, very strong, if not too strong. Probably about ten points a model too cheap, if I had to put a points price on it. And the Interemptors, I feel like they're too strong, with the amount of plasma they're throwing out. Although people do like to point out, it's only strength four plasma. Hmm... In Horus Heresy, I think the strength is less important than the AP. There are very few times where you'll turn around and go, hey, if only that was strength 5, that would have saved my ass. Maybe if you're going up against, say, large mechanical automata, yeah, okay, that could be a problem. But why would you point this unit at an obvious counter to it? This is the sort of unit you want to be pointing at enemy powered armoured squads or enemy terminator units. So the average you're going to get on that D3 plus 1 is 3 shots, so 3 shots per guy, range 12 inches. Mm -hmm. If you if you chuck them into a drill dough, that's probably the best way to deploy them. Use a termite assault drill, chuck a squad of 12 in that, or 10 in that, pop up next to something very vital to the enemy, um, very important, 
and then hose them down with a whole bunch of plasma. Three shots per model, just ten of these guys, not even taking into account the big gun, the incinerator. Um, just three of these guys, sorry, ten of these guys, three shots each. That's going to be 30 shots. Of that, you're going to get probably, uh, let's think, 30 shots. So 12 of those are going to miss. So that's 18 are going to hit, and of that on a Marine, about 9 are going to wound, and they're not going to get armor saves. If they're Terminators, they'll get 5 up, so out of 9 wounds, you're looking at about 2 saves at best. So that's like 7 to 8 dead Terminators right off the bat there. And this is cheaper than a 10-man squad of Terminators. If it's a 5-man squad of Terminators, it'll probably kill them. So very strong in that regard. Um, I think points-wise, though, they're, they're probably in the zone they should be. They're not too cheap. Mm, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Yeah, the, the Dark Angels of the Legion, they, their units are, are so bizarre. The nerf to the acid rounds has really changed things up. I think I'm going to have to do a new getting start in Horus Heresy for them and the uh, Night Lords because of it. Uh, both legions have had such big changes in this book. Uh, and they're not changes that affect the overall legion, but just one or two units which changes how the rest of the legion performs because, well, I think you're going to see Inner Circle Knight Cenobium make it into most lists that aren't Ravenwing because they're just so strong. Even a five-man squad of these, just with swords, is the perfect counter to monstrous creatures. And you will see that. <sighs> Strong. Strong units. Alright. So going back into the chat questions. Dumb question, but if recasts look good enough, is it okay or is it super frowned upon? Uh, that's something for you and your community to discuss. It has nothing to do with me. Hi Maka, what are your thoughts on running Les Cannon Heavy Support Squads? Well, Devon, they're very, very expensive. Uh, there are certain situations I think they're really good in. If you have, say, fortification that you can hide them in where they're not going to be getting shot back at, super strong. If you're playing on a very open tabletop, super strong. Uh, certain legions, like, say, the Imperial Fists, where they get tank hunters for free on Legion Heavy Support Squads, means that Les Cannons, insanely good because they're basically getting to re-roll their damage on tanks, which is great. Uh, but they are a very expensive unit if you're going to be running a lot of them. Still, for Raven Guard characters, Derek says, pretty much the only thing I care enough to spend on this point. The Raven Guard are interesting because they've got zero characters. They don't even have a single special character. Neither do uh, neither do the Salamanders. Salamanders and Raven Guard both lack consoles and characters. The range is a set of Mark VI heads. All the Mark VI squad upgrades like Vexilia, that kind of thing, all removed from Forge Earth Web Store. So you have a very mediocre Contempt of Dreadnought, which we'll look at because I like looking at Contemptors, even if this is one of the worst. Uh, the beautiful Mordethian and the beautiful Dark Fury squads. Like, the units they've got, Korax and both specialist units, look beautiful to me. Um, but, yeah. The uh, Contemptor here. I think this is sculpted by Sheila Trish Morrison, something like that. It used to say, they don't say anymore. Uh, some things that are really nice on it. I really like the chest with the little bird skull, the, the raven's head sunk into it, with that nice raised embossed wing shape around it. But the faux tribal all over it looks terrible. <laughs> Definitely a situation where uh, decals work better. What they should have done was just had embossed raven symbols and iconography, not the embossed tribal. Uh, especially because when it's made, um, often that's where the little air bubbles form, and so heaps of those little dots don't make it to the final model. Look good in the Cartaridon's army, though. 
that's a thing. We've got a five dollar super chat uh, from Tunguska. It's two super chats from Tunguska now. Uh, did you read Saturnine? Abnet ruins more lore in that book than all the other authors combined. Uh, yeah, I have read it, but I haven't really digested it to heart because I only half-assed read it because I wasn't very enthralled by it. It's not like the perturable uh, Primarch novel where I'm like, oh, I want to listen to that again. Yeah, it's the polar opposite. Saturnine. Uh, all the Solar World books kind of suck. Uh, I think it's because John French led the charge on that, and I'm not a John French fan, as many would know. Yeah, it doesn't help. A lot of war, a lot of great characters just have like one page entrances and exits from the whole uh, history. It's like, oh, here's this really cool character that everyone loves, and he's dead. So that that hurts. <laughs> hurts me deep. Uh, Lost Land Studio says, Hey, Maka. Yay or nay on Biomancy Cult for 5 man destroyer squads with Rad Missile Launcher from Playtest Rules? Uh, yeah, it'll work. They'll be better for it. Um, destroyers are pretty damn strong nowadays. I was using them a lot in my Raven Guard. I had two units of 10 with jump packs in my Raven Guard. Uh, in Thousand Suns with the Raptora Cult, yeah, they're pretty damn strong. The thing is, though, they were always going to be strong. The cult is just the little cherry on top of the cake when it comes to Thousand Suns. The cult is just a little bonus on top of what's already really good. GTRK, also not yet confirmed, but the Drildo will be dedicated transport for destroyers. That will save up one fast attack slot and allow legions like Iron Hands to take it. Hmm, there you go. Uh, Busty Boost says, what do you think of the Lumineth Realm Lord prices? Uh, that would be the new Age of Sigma, I'm guessing. wanted oh, this is all 40k that won't do age of sigma pre-orders okay so i haven't really looked through these so if you want me to go through all of them one by one uh let me know in the chat now just a simple yes will do and I can go through all of these units because there's quite a bit to digest in there. Book 9 is being leaked on forward slash TG f photos for units. So, yeah, I've seen them all already, but I want to actually have the book in my hand before I go making up uh, any pronouncements or opinions on it because just reading leaks on their own colours one's perception, uh, good or bad. And that wouldn't be fair on the work the people have put in at Forge World, even if I think they don't work very hard at the moment. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. The Perturabo book was good, but I wish Graham McNeil did it. Yeah, I think we all did. Tanzmanus Maker, if you're a Primark, what strategies would you mostly focus on for your Legion? Also, I love every video. You're the most real YouTuber out there. Well, thank you. Um, I think we were discussing it last night, and Tim and Kat definitely think I would be Perturabo. <laughs> I'm too analytical and too cold-hearted emotionally uh, and very by-the-book for, hey, this is how I'm going to conquer my enemy. Um, yeah, they're probably right. As much as I wish I was Magnus, apparently I'm not enough of a nerd or something, or don't have a... Um, I think Kat said I don't have a degree from university, so I can't be Magnus. Zverlo40 says, Have you seen any of the new entries in Book 9, like the trip bikes? Yes, I have. I've 
read through it all. Garo um, released a whole bunch of stuff on Facebook summarising the book for those who are interested. Alright, so obviously we have a lot of people saying yes. It looks like about 11 to 5, yes to no's. So, guess what we're looking at? Well, if I click on this one here, I can look at pretty much everything in one place. So we'll do that. What have we got here? We have a goat man that spawned a small mountain on his back. Someone floating over Mr. Miyagi's bonsai tree. Uh, some Corinthian cavalry from ancient Greece. And some dudes who are trying to be Stormcast Eternals but are way too small and their cosplay is clearly terrible. Alright, let's look at them one by one. I like these cavalry a lot. I think they look more ancient Greek than Elven off the top of my head. Um, the horses have those really weird looking front legs. For some reason, it just sticks straight out to me. It's like this, just the horse just sticking the arms straight out. Um, doesn't look quite right. I don't know why. Don't know why. I think it's normally, uh, normally the ankle is tilted down at the very front of the hoof on most horses when they're charging. That's why. So a departure from the previous cavalry sculpted by Games Workshop. Uh, they look perfectly serviceable to me. I like the little bit of scale mail armor hanging off them, although it's completely impractical. Uh, the barding is nice. The little runes and such sculpted onto them are nice. Yeah, if only they showed this much effort for high elves. <laughs> ah, here we go. Mr. Miyagi's bonsai tree. Let's see. Imagine if this guy fell off, if his little uh, rock stool slid off and he fell ass first down onto that obelisk. Imagine trying to explain that one at the emergency department. Uh, what a weird looking model. So now the... Is that a guy or a shield? They're looking very intense, no matter who they are. They've got the, the thousand yard stare. Big long cloak. Is this trying to be Avatar the Last Airbender or something? It's a very weird faction. Unfortunately, the enemies in Age of Sigmar are going to draw a really, really easy line of sight to this model. Hmm. They have very, very tall hats. With very big horns. How heavy would these helmets be at that height? Mm, I'm thinking entirely practical in a game which has zero practicality. That won't do. Uh, I don't know why they've gone for hammers on the faction. I think spears is definitely the more elven weapon. And we should definitely be seeing a lot more in the way of spears on them. Uh, spears or glaives of some kind. Pole arms in general. As opposed to hammers, because there are already a lot of factions which use hammers. Dwarves use a lot of hammers. And of course the Stormcast Eternals use a lot of hammers. So, mm, a little bit of a miss for me on that design cue. But I think they're perfectly serviceable models. This thing, um... <laughs> this will probably look pretty good in Demons of the Ruin Storm. You could probably convert this into something cool. Or maybe some sort of weird avatar of goats for um <laughs> for 40k he's got a mountain on his back as was the fashion at the time why does he have a mountain on his back that makes no sense and also when he's i carried a lot of backpacks the back of him would be really really heavy with that big rock on there what a what a weird range of models what's the there's another version of him right oh it's got the same mountains. Only this time he's got small Mr. Miyagi bonsais on it. Who's tending to these bonsais? Uh, I will hand it to Games Workshop. The new range is... Um, interesting. Uh, those have got to be the worst dice ever. Uh, yeah. They've tried to imbue some sort of 
East Asian culture into the elves. But they haven't gone full East Asian with interesting weapons. Uh, so say from India eastward, they could do things like katars and um, different types of ninjatos, different types of glaives. Eh, yeah, it's serviceable, I guess. I can't say much more than that. All right, back to the questions. Uh, geez, games which are prices suck for you guys in Australia. Canada isn't far behind you. Yes, I know they suck. You do not need to remind me. <laughs> uh, the ancient Greek look worse, IMO, considering the fact that Warhammer Force Bell had their land was based on Plato's Atlantis. Yeah, but Atlanteans weren't Greeks. They were Atlanteans, which is a different culture again, much like uh, the Phoenicians, uh the Etruscans are all very different to, say, the Romans, the Carthaginians, uh, the classical Minoans, or the ancient Mycenaeans, uh, the Hittites, the Egyptians. All those different cultures are so different from one another despite sharing the same part of the world or even incorporating into one another's empires over time. Yes, I like history. Yeah, exactly, Forkers. I just fell when he walks into the emergency department with an obelisk and a small bonsai up his ass. <laughs> uh, only some models are good, and only from Warhammer Force of Battle perspective, GTRK says. Although the prices are so high, it would be better to buy old models on eBuy. Yes. Use the cow head as the model's helmet, not an extension of said helmet. Yeah, that could actually look pretty cool. Um, beastman heads or something. Also, remember this is Age of Sigmar, not Warhammer Fantasy, so don't believe the hype of them being high elves. Murder moo. Uh, there is no cow level, guys. Just remember that. Big battle cows are avatars of mountains. Sure. Which mountain? Uh, Weird how Lumineth has no generic HQ with swords or spears like Commander or something, all being mages and one spirit armor of Altharian the Grim. I do like that spirit armor. A lot of people don't. Um, because Warhammer, that's why all the hammers, so customers know they're playing Warhammer. <laughs> yes, that's pretty funny, Corbs. <laughs> Forkicus says, take a look at the Painter Nightmare model. Are you referring to uh, the Cathaler? 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 Catheter? Are you referring to the Cincinnati Catheter? It's not my best joke. Uh, <laughs> you don't need to paint the, the skin underneath that. For all we know, it could be a nice dark veil she's wearing and she can't even see out of it she could be blind and uses magic to see around so it's not that much of a painter's nightmare although i do want to know uh, i do want to know what she's doing with grimer or muck if you're a pokemon fan uh climbing out of her chalice there see i think it's meant to be sculpted on smoke but last i remember smoke isn't big uh purplish blue globs Good old Robin Williams flubber. Hmm. Interesting she's dark hair though, and not the typical elven blonde hair. This is, uh, I can't believe it's not Arwen, I guess. She's wearing the same sort of colours as Arwen from uh, Middle Earth. Hmm. Yeah. Not my favourite. Forty K Nurgle Pus dice were the worst, I know. Well, at least forty K Nurgle Pus dice could roll, whereas these things, yeah, good luck quickly counting those and picking them up. Try it's bad enough trying to hold twenty dice in your hand as it is. Imagine twenty of those cylinders in your hands. Busty Boo says the cowman with the non bonsai mountain is the king of the cows, and the mountain is the Aether Quartz, which are essentially emotional dampers and totally not soul stuff. Oh, okay. 
Sounds dumb. It appears there's only one cast of elves. Okay. Angus Wilson Spillane asks, what are the practical use of 20-man tactical squads with mention to Iron Warriors? Uh, don't take them. There's not really much to be gained from having a 20-man unit over, say, a 15-man unit. 10 to 15 models on an objective will hold that objective in the event of being shot at a lot by the enemy. The good thing for Iron Warriors, unlike most legions, is you will not be taking morale from shooting, so that giant 20-man unit you can barely fit on the board in your 12-inch deployment zone will not take a few casualties, fail their morale check, and run off the board in turn 1. And yes, I've seen that happen. So, that's a thing. Um, yeah, I don't suggest 20-man tactical squads at all for Iron Warriors. Because with other legions, having a bigger squad means they need to take more casualties before they take morale checks. For them, it's not going to be a problem. And if they get into a situation where they end up in close combat with a legion like, say, World Eaters, well, having 20 models is still not going to get you a win in that close combat. Whereas it will... Um, you might hold out a little longer because you'll have more bodies, but you're still going to lose in the end. So I just don't recommend it. 10 to 15, perfectly fine for Iron Warriors. Book 9 is as thick as a red book. Yeah, 100 pages less. Oh, actually more. What was it we said last stream? 104 pages and uh, $5 more. 104 less pages. So it's only two-thirds the size of Book 7 and costs more. For Kikis says using spray painted cotton works better. Oh yes, for um marking different things on the battlefield. K Parker says clearly supposed to be Hexius from Fern Gully. Um no Burum. Worst dice are the Dark Imperium dice. People I play with complain that you can barely see the result. Yeah, that's possible. Michael Tomaszewski, and still Tyrion is hiding. Yeah, he's still looking around for something. Uh, Fukika says two 15 man assault squads or three 10 man squads for Blood Angels, Day of Revelation, Rite of War. Oh, yeah, the assault squads. Uh, two 15 man assault squads with apothecaries is going to get better results because they are going to take casualties trying to assault. Uh, so you still want to get in with that 10 man. Especially if you're going up against legions like, say, the uh, Sons of Horus or the Night Wards, who will have bonuses if they outnumber you. You want to have the least possible chance of being outnumbered by them. So avoid that at all costs. Go for the slightly bigger squads with the Blood Angels. Thomas M. Charles sends a super chat, but um, no question. But feel free to ask a question. Thank you for the super chat. Uh... Michael Tomaszewski says, well, that was the closest foreigner said to my name. Hey, I'm um, I'm trying here, man. <laughs> it's actually really hard with the foreign names. I'm Australian, so names like Smith, John, that kind of thing is like the normal Australian name. Uh, I think a career in the military has turned every last name into a nickname, so you'd just be Tomo. I, I worked with a guy who was half Greek, half Japanese. Uh, Demetrius Katsukis. Jimmy. We call him Jimmy. Yeah, man, this Age of Sigma stuff is so all over the shop. I. How much more stuff is in this faction? Look at them all. Light of Altharion. See, I like this model, and I think it's really interesting how they've managed to create this model. Oh, wow. We've gotten 3D printing, prototyping, digital sculpt into the point where you can make something like this, which is all these hollow parts. You know, the uh, left arm is just held to the cloak, the right arm is held to the sword, which is held to the cloak with a little lanyard on the end of the sword like that's some good design like you've got to give some praise to the designers of this particular model at games workshop um the only thing that was a little weird is because of his the way his right foot is posed looking at it from the front 
and his armor is so pale, it looks kind of like he's got a goat leg thing going on. <laughs> he doesn't, but that's the way it looks. Yeah, it's a nice model. I'm totally cool with that. I wonder what his rules are like. Uh, let's see. Doesn't tell you the points because they never do. They want to save that for their app. Seven wounds. That's pretty normal for a single model. Move six inches. It's fine. Save three plus. It's good. Bravery is 10. It's very good. Uh, four attacks. Two attacks. Two plus to hit. That's very good. Rend minus three. D3 damage. Oof. So potentially 12 damage on the Fang Sword of Altharion. Uh, let's see. Add one to, to wound rolls for attacks made with this model's Fang Sword if the model has made a charge in the same turn. In addition, if the unmodified wound roll for the attack made with this model is a six, the attack inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any normal damage. So if you rolled four sixes to wound on the Fang Sword of Altharion and then rolled sixes or fives and sixes on all your D3 damage results, you've got the potential to do 16 damage with just the Fang Swords. That's pretty strong. Uh, the average, though, would be something around nine. All right, Selenari Blade. At the start of the combat phase, you can pick one enemy hero in three into this model. If you do so, add one to the damage inflicted by successful attacks made with this model, Selenari Blade, that target the hero in that phase. Uh, probably not gonna do much damage though with that. If the lower rend, the less attacks, obviously. Uh, in your shooting phase, pick one enemy unit within two inches of this model. On a roll of a 1, nothing happens. On a 2 to 4, the unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. On a 5+, plus, that model suffers D6 mortal wounds. So it's basically lifting the veil like on um, Lady Alinda. Spirit Armor. Ignores, modifies, positive or negative when making saving rolls for attacks that target this model. Oof, that increases his survivability dramatically. In addition, half the damage inflicted by attacks made with missile weapons or melee weapons that target this model. Oh, that is tough. Ignore negative modifiers and making hit rolls for attacks made by this model. In addition, if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made by this model is a 6, that attack scores 2 hits on the target instead of 1. Holy crap. If... Okay, in the world of very unlikely, pretty much impossible things to do, if you rolled sixes on all your to hits with the Fang Sword, you could get eight hits. If you rolled sixes on all your to wounds, you would cause eight mortal wounds, and then you would get to roll eight D3 damage. And if all of those were five or sixes, then you could potentially do another 24 on top of that. So it's actually potential pool of 32 mortal wounds and wounds from the Fang Sword of Altharion alone. Completely unrealistic that you would roll that. That would be like a one in several hundred thousand chance, but Jesus, just the chance that you could have a really great roll. Uh, don't knock the ability to roll sixes. The amount of times my uh, Grimgast Reapers in my Night Haunt have rolled a lot of sixes, yeah. Uh, you can use this command ability at the start of the battle shock phase. If you do, pick one friendly model with this command ability. Until the end of the phase, all friendly Lumineth Realm Lord units are wholly within 24 inches of that model. A treat is having a bravery characteristic of 10. Eh, it's fine. So strong. These are the best High Elf Spearmen High Elves never got. Where were the... Sorry, I'm just going to look it up. Uh, let's see if Spearman actually brings up the old High Elf Spearman, or if they're completely disappeared. Cities of Sigma. View all. Assistant of the Watch. I'm trying to remember. I think... The last time High Elf Spearman, actual Spearman got updated, was, I think, the late 90s. 
So, yeah, these, these new spearmen are, um, they're a major step up from that. They look beautiful. I love the plumes on the helmets. The helmets aren't too excessive. They're not like the ones in the, uh, star collecting box or whatever it is for the army. Uh, how do three bowstrings become one bowstring? That's a really weird design. I don't like that. Uh, they're trying to be some sort of Yumi bow. Except the whole Yumi bow concept works off. See, having three different strings attached to the same point, that's not how leverage works. <laughs> uh, um, don't overthink it, Mako. It's just a fantasy game. Alright, what do we got here? Archmage, Teclas, and Selenar, the Spirit of Hish. I really like the Spirit of Hish itself. I don't know how I feel about um, Archmagos uh, Teclas here. I'll call him Magos because why not? Maybe Aladdin because he's got the uh, same sort of pants as Aladdin has in the Disney movie. Mm. <laughs> why are these models stuck together? I would rather see the uh, Spirit of Hish Selena on its own. It kind of reminds me of a... Um, what's that Chaos Dwarf one? Not the um, Manticore or anything. Not the Bull Taurus. They got the other one. Um, I always forget its name. Oh, jeez. What's it called? The... Uh, it'll come to me later. They've got, they got a, one of these sort of half-man, half-beast type creatures themselves. Um, Lamassu. Lamassu? Hey, four sleepers union. You say at the same time I do. Lamassu. Um, yeah, that thing... That's kind of like a Lamassu right here. Doesn't have the gorgeous Babylonian beard, though. Uh, yeah, what's Teclas doing running around Aladdin's pants? Is this Sultan Teclas the first? I don't like this Teclas model at all. I really liked the last Teclas model. This doesn't do anything for me. It's it's a lateral movement, not an improvement. Uh, I want to see improvements on the models, where they look cooler and better, not different for the sake of different. And that's what I think of that model. All right. Back to the chat question. What faction do you think Games Workshop will play out their ass next? Uh, are we talking Age of Sigma or 40k? 40k, uh, obviously they'll keep updating their existing factions. I do think they might have something for the Dark Mechanicum in the pipeline, but that could just be me overthinking the situation. Because I'm looking at it going, hey, if Games Workshop slash Forge World decided to um, do a Dark Mechanicum plastic range, then both Horus Heresy and 40k could use it. But I don't know that they necessarily will do that. Uh, for Age of Sigma, I think they're due for another redo of a, of a more evil, probably destruction or death faction. Because uh, let's think the last few factions done were what the Assyriarch Bone Reapers, the fish people of um, Troy McClure fish land eh. mm. dwarves maybe something with dwarves they've done the uh, dwarf slayer theme, they've done the sky dwarves maybe they might do a really heavily armoured say iron breaker themed dwarf ground army that might be something fun they could do or they might do something else with the orcs uh, which are the orcs but we can't call them orcs because that's not copyright friendly Angus Wilson Spillane. Damn, that Aussie nickname is true. I go to a boarding school and everybody has got a nickname. Of course it's true. I wouldn't lie to you. I always tell people the truth, even if it uh, hurts me <laughs> to do so, because I get in a lot of trouble sometimes for being honest. Luke Norris says, Do you think the old world will ever come back? Well, it is coming back. Uh, and just like Fulkekis says, uh, I think it is in 15 mil scale. I've heard that, and a few people have mentioned that. 
But the reason is that if you do it in 28 mil scale, uh, the AU Sigma models will not transition across to it, and they do not need two games that compete in the same scale in the same sort of fantasy setting because the Age of Sigma fantasy setting cannot live up to the Warhammer Old World setting, which has way, way better fluff and more interesting characters. Busty Boost, the Light of Altharian is 220 points. That's actually pretty good. That's really good. Because he's small as well. He's not going to really stick out in the battlefield getting sniped off like my Kurdos Valentian does. Uh, Thomas M. Charles, what are some of your favorite third-party model stores? I ordered from Wargame Exclusive and highly recommend. Uh, obviously the RTLW slash Wargame Exclusive stuff. Uh, I also like Cromlick. Bring them up now. Uh, Cromlick does a lot of Orc stuff. Yeah, I want, I want their online store. So, uh, their bits of war, they call this. I'm not in America. I'm not in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cookies. Cookies and cream, I get it. Um, they do a lot of conversion bits. So, could say conversion bits by race will go chaos. So, you have a whole range of different uh, weapons, such as swords. You've got different heads, helmets available to you. There's some militia-type heads, the chemtrooper ones. Uh, some thousand, time, uh, set, uh, thousand Suns-type heads here. You've also got different legs for Imperial Guard scale models, Emperor's Children parts, buzz saws, uh, different types of legs available to you, little wings. There's some really cool bits here. Not everything, like the wings, for example, look a bit iffy. But a lot of it is generally pretty damn good stuff. Uh, so definitely a go-to, especially for like conversion bits, like different uh, alternate plasma guns, bolt guns, jump packs, um, stuff like that that might you might find really useful when you're creating a force. Um, and you don't want to go buying expensive parts from Games Workshop. I definitely recommend giving Cromwick uh, a look in. Uh, also, Anvil Industries. Anvil Industries does some very cool stuff. Um, I think Cat and I have covered all these stores before, but it never hurts to do it again when someone asks the question. So they've got different ranges, um, but say we go to Exo Wards, for instance, we'll go into their Black Ops Exo Wards. And this will give us a whole bunch of Space Marine analogs that you could use as something like uh, Marine Scout Snipers. So here you've got the Black Ops Sniper, for instance. There's different types of Marine type legs, arms, hands, weapons, you name it. Um, I also like Conversion World, uh, who has sent me some free stuff in the past, so full disclaimer. But I did really like the stuff. So here you have a lot of cool weapon upgrades. Like look at the quality on these weapons, the uh, digital sculpt here with all the chain with the actual links wrapped around the blade of the weapon. Some something like say the energy halberd, which would make a really nice looking glaive for the white scars. And in fact, I think it looks better than Forge World's glaives because this actually looks like a Guangdao or another Chinese weapon. Uh, so that's really cool. When they make their different weapons, though, um, say so melee weapons, they actually come with hands to hold the weapons. So rather than having to cut the, the weapon to make it fit, these hands come and you replace the existing weapon on your space ring with the hand, and the weapon actually slides in between the thumb and the fingers. And as you can see, the prices are not ludicrous at all. So that's two or three neat models uh, or neat shops that I like to go to. Uh, another one that might be useful to look at, although it's a lot more expensive, uh, Cyborg. So Cyborg is more unique. It's not necessarily trying to ape 40k or anything. There are units that definitely do. 
Um, but Cyborg has some pretty cool conversion accessories. So, say if we go sci fi Roman Legionnaires, which are, I guess, a Custodes analog, they got some really cool bits, especially shields and such. Um, I do think their web store is a freaking mess because uh, you click on stuff, it comes up in like these little boxes and such, and it's a pain in the ass to navigate through sometimes. But you can see, especially the shields are cool on these models. Uh, and I actually think I like their blades and staves more than the Custodes actual glaives and staves. Uh, they've got some really cool conversion bits as well. Um, hands of well, shields. So we'll go shields. And you can see they just come on a nice sprue. Well, I guess always should come on a sprue, shouldn't it? Um, and yeah, Cyborg has some pretty cool stuff as well you can use for conversions. So, lots of stuff to pick from there. There's even a few bases as well, if you're that way inclined. Um, these Greek Alpha Omega shields, for instance. Uh, these would look really nice in an Ultramarines army, for instance. Uh, give them to a Praetor, or it's in different characters, as combat shields will look excellent in a command squad. So hopefully that's helpful to people who are generally curious about some different manufacturers. Pickle Rick asks, how does those Phobos chain axes fit into resin plastic models since Forge World decide to axe those loose set of 10 chain axes are not going for like conversion world? Um really i haven't tried them so i wouldn't be able to tell you i haven't tried all of the different chain axes out there i've tried the conversion world ones which are really nice um, but i haven't tried cromwex ones i have tried some of their swords on my previous thousand sons project and they went on pretty well but you do have to sort of cut file and pin to get best results hunting freeman asks was altharian such a grand lad in the old world that he deserves this strong of a model um no in the old world, Altharian originally popped up as a character who becomes sort of a swordmaster of Hoeth and was blinded by, I think it was Malekith himself. And then he recovers at the Tower of Hoeth. It was, there was a big story on him in White Dwarf and they released this really kick-ass model for him way back when, which they're probably... I'll see if I can find it on Google. It was a really nice model. Um... I don't know, it just embodied some of the stuff I like about old school Warhammer. There you go. Altharian the Blind. So holding the sword over there. I really like that model and I thought it looked really cool. <laughs> it had a great backstory. Uh, and of course there's Altharian the Grim, who is the guy on the Hippogriff. And I don't know if the same or different character. Because there's some weird shenanigans that have gone on with um, in the background there. Luke Norris says, R.I.P. Tomb Kings. Yeah, Tomb Kings are one of my favourites, personally. Another super chat from Tunguska. Speaking of cool models, Space Marine Heroes Series 1 were basically the upscale tacticals we all wanted, but Games Workshop flexed on us by showing us what we could have had and then shelving it for adding wounds. I have a full set of them, the uh, Space Marine Heroes, and I've used them for my Space Crusade redo, and they're actually not really true scaled they only seem a tiny bit big because of the way they're posed on the bases instead of having that really wide leg stance um, I'll, I'll bring it up as well as people know what I'm talking about um, instead of having that really wide leg stance a lot of the models are standing more upright or running poses as opposed to their legs are splayed wide apart uh, which brings them down squatting slightly in height these guys don't have that. Um, also, they're an absolute dream to put together. They're really easy to clean up, really easy to build. Um, yeah, great little set, and I've used mine to create my uh, Space Marines uh, for Space Crusade to redo the old set 
because they've got that real interesting character look going on with them. And they're pretty cool. They've also done the other sets, such as the... Um, Terminators. The Blood Angels ones. There you go. Someone's actually done up a set of them. So they're pretty damn cool. And they also did a Nurgle set. Um, which I actually like more than a lot of the Plague Marines they did release. So... All in all, they're pretty cool, but they only seem to release them in Japan, so work that one out. Cold Shotter says, yeah, I'd like the option to take tech lessons and sell an art together or separate. Yeah, I think they should do that more. The, uh, this, everyone would remember, I'm sure, the big motherfucker from, um, Catacross. This guy, the uh, engineer off Prometheus, wearing the Atlantean hat from Conan the Barbarian. This guy has to be used on this base with these four minor heroes on the base. And they form a single model on the tabletop, which I think is a bit silly. Uh, and as it's wounded, you start removing these different characters and their buffs from the model. And he actually doesn't personally take part in the combat until the very end when everyone else is dead. Only then is he like, fine, I'll get off my ass and do it. Uh, and then he pours the black goo on everyone and they all die a horrible, horrible franchise-related death whilst uh, Michael Fassbender does the fingering. Um, so the Prometheus Engineer here would be great to be fielded as a separate model on a base of his own. It would be really cool to field him on a 60mm base with downgraded stats instead of having to always field him on this giant uh, flyer base. And it is a big base. Uh, every game, but unfortunately, Games Workshop decided, no, no, you can play him as this giant thing all the time, which is kind of a shame. Bot Zoars says, that Babylonian lion just makes me think of the poor Chaos Dwarves. Well, Chaos Dwarves, I think they still exist over at Forge World. Uh, they won't be in Temurkin's Hogwarts, they'll be Legion of Asgore. I've nearly pulled the trigger on a Chaos Dwarf army so many times, but for old school Warhammer Fantasy, not for Age of Sigma, because Age of Sigma doesn't interest me for Chaos Dwarves. Um, really nice faction, really nice range. Unfortunately, because they're resin, not uh, plastics, you pretty much have two to three models, and that's it, and they repeat the same two to three models in the entire I uh, Infernal Guard and Infernal Guard uh, Iron Sworn and Fire Glaives units. All they do is change the arms out. They've all got the same helmet, the same body, the same shoulder pads. So it's a very samey force, but for rank and file models, that's all right. The problem is that you're paying uh, $10 a model for a dwarf that's 20 millimeters tall on a 20 millimeter square base. That's very pricey. Um, the war engines are pretty good too, both the... Iron Demon and the Magma Cannon are both really good in old school Warhammer Fantasy. The Dreadquake Mortar is as well, although I probably wouldn't take it most games. The Kadai Fireborn are just terrible, so I'd probably never use them, even if they do look cool. The Bull Centaurs are really good, especially Shator the Executioner, because he's a giant monster. Um, so yeah, if you can get him in there, great. Demon Smiths are great. Uh, um... Drazoleth the Ashen. I probably would just run more more often a generic ward on a bull Taurus instead of him. But he's cool. There's a lot of cool cast dwarf stuff. I do have a limited edition guy somewhere in my bits box. I have a lot of bits box stuff. Don't even ask me about how much stuff. I pulled my entire Solar Ogs army that I bought after book 5 Horus Heresy came out. I pulled my entire Solar Ogs army out of storage to start building it this year, last couple of weeks. So, yeah, I know I've got a limited edition dude somewhere, Demon Mancer or whatever it is. Yeah, what a great range. Corb says, do you think Craft Worlds will finally get some decent love? <laughs> You're a funny guy. I'm working on what, epi uh, what Break the Fans episode for the Eldar at the moment. 
thing that's killing me is going back and trying to find out exactly when everything was made. Um, give me a tick here. And I'll see... If I can pull up... I actually managed to put together a picture. Here it is. This is a slide that I'm going to be using in the uh, What Broke the Fans Elder. But as you can see, the late 2000s, uh, so the late 2010s and the early 2010s, so the last decade, is the green and blue. And all the yellow stuff is either their releases that came with 4th edition Eldar, and the red stuff is the stuff is from the 1994, basically, uh, which includes the Warp Spiders, Phoenix Lord Karandras, Phoenix Lord Baharoth, the Swooping Hawks, the Shining Spears, the Falcon Grav Tank, the, which wasn't 94, it was 99 for the Grav Tank, I believe. The Warlock with Witchblade and Shuriken Pistol. Phoenix Lord Assurman, Morgan Ra, Phoenix Lord Fugan, uh, the Viper, the F Avatar of Kane. They're all 1990s models. Yeah, most. There is as much stuff made for the 4th edition release as everything made since the 4th edition release. Uh, and the 4th edition release for the Eldar was in 2004. So it has been a rough 20 years for, well, 16 years for the Eldar. Because they've had as much released in 16 years as they had released in that one year. Uh, yeah, that's a file I'm working on. So what broke the fans, Eldar, is happening. Michael says, yeah, there were uh, already some hints about Grungni making something new after his depression. Yeah, well, there you go. I would like to see some sort of really uh, buffed up um, Iron Breaker style dwarves for Age of Sigma. That'd be cool. I don't know how they would go trying to do some interesting characters for them. I'm sure they'll do something like uh, the old Dwarf King Alaric where he was carried on the shield. They might do something like that as their character. Bring back Alaric. We'll see. Who apparently is not a busy god. Cole Shoulder says they have some nice power malls on Cromwell. I'm considering for my Horus Heresy Thousand Suns Terminators, as you suggested. Great, good to hear. GTRK says he also used a lot of their bionic bits, Cromwell's. Yep. Ryan Schmidt says looking at building some missile launchers. Uh, some missile launcher servitors, sorry, to go with my tech marine. I was wondering how you go about making them. I did it myself by using the Mechanicum. So I went to this particular... Why do they only insist on showing me nine things? I want to see all the things. This guy here. I bought this guy and I've used him. I have like five of this Magos sitting around the house unbuilt because I've been working on all his minions. So these little servitors or tech boys running around on his base. Let's see if I can get one on his own. This little arm on the side here is a glue on feature. If you don't glue it on, there's a little uh, ball joint that comes out of the arm. You can use that ball joint to glue a Space Marine Missile Launcher to. So if I go to uh, Weapons, get rid of the Mechanicum filter, and I scroll down to the Underslung Space Marine Missile Launchers. If you cut the handle off at the top of here, here, and where the hand is, then these Missile Launchers fit very neatly onto those models in that slot uh, beside them. And uh, I would love to show you some pictures of it, except I've got none here with me right now. Uh, plus the backpacks you can save for another project on some Marines elsewhere. So that's how I did my missile armed servitors. And it looks really good. P. 
Eagle Rick says, Mad Robot miniatures have great variety for Imperial Guard troops like Colonial Marines or Vietnam soldiers. Yeah, so does Victorian miniatures. The problem is price. Um, oh, Kat says, I of Horus is actually doing a live stream right now. Uh, Titanicus. So that's pretty cool. Huh. Falcon Korak says, What do you think about the new Lion model? And now we can see it properly. Uh, I spoke about it last live stream. I think it looks really good, actually. Uh, but it should. It's a Primark. I don't think I've seen one yet that I hate. Uh, Mortarian obviously is missing his rebreather, but that's a nitpick. Uh, and Fulgrim's doing the men without hats dance. It's fine. Uh, GTR cases. By the way, Macro, I sent you a PM on Instagram about something I asked Kat the other day when he streamed. Uh, good luck. Instagram is terrible for uh, sending and receiving messages on because you just don't notice you've got them. Um, you, you sort of it gets lumped in with a lot of other notifications, and then you got to find it. Uh, and we get a lot of notifications when we post on Instagram, so that's the thing. Four Sweepers Union asks, "What's your favorite Victorian brewery?" Um, at the moment, I'm drinking Great Northerns, which I don't think are Victorian. I think they're from Queensland. Yeah, it's from Cairns. Um, I mostly like to drink scotch. I drink beer at home because I get given a lot of beer because I do a lot of um, cash-in-hand type work. But it's not actually cash-in-hand. It's just doing favours for people and helping them out, like putting uh, dash cams in their cars or CB radios in their cars or... Uh, molding something at work out of plastic or machining a new part for them on my way. I do these favors for people and the typical currency in Australia used to pay someone for these services rendered is beer. So I end up with a lot of beer from people uh, for doing favors for them, like machining them parts or doing technical drawings for them or figuring out how much steel they need for a job, that kind of thing. Busty Boo says... Were you planning to continue the Horace Heresy book reviews with Sevatar? Ah, uh, we are, but he is in a busy place at the moment. He's planning on moving into a house. Unfortunately, the house he was looking at had a giant tree fall on it and pretty much crushed half of the house off. So he's very busy trying to sort that out. I hope I haven't said too much about that. Um, but I don't think he'll mind. Hunting Freeman says, I think the best molds to come from the hero sets have been the Captain in 1 and Terminator Ancient in 2 because the Ancients get no love. Hell, we still don't have the Dark Imperium Primaris Ancient. Very true, very true. Chris Bico says, which demon Primark do you think we're getting next? Fulgrim or Angry Ron or Perturabo? Probably Angry Ron. Um, Corn is a faction that Games Workshop loves working on. They've already got a whole bunch of... Uh, CAD files saved up, which will have a bunch of corn iconography, that kind of thing. So that will mean it's a lot easier to start the sculpting process because a lot of the pain in the ass details have already been created. All the different little skulls and trophies and icons, and they can just scale them to fit on the new models. Plus, they probably already have the um, the file from Khan the Betrayer for 40k. So if I go to him. Carb. Carb, the glutinous betrayer. Um, all this file here will already exist. Uh, I don't like this model, for those who are curious. Um, all these details already exist, such as the chain axe, um, the corn eight shoulder pads, the corn head, and they can tweak these files slightly in their animated design programs and more easily make new uh, corn berserkers and such, as opposed to having to do noise marines where a lot of it will have to be done from new files from scratch. Augustus says, Mordheim would be cool if it gets redone. I would love Mordheim to be redone. I'm a massive Mordheim fan. Cyclone, uh, don't really know what I've stumbled upon, he says. Is this d and uh, No, it's not Dungeon Dragons. It is a Warhammer-related uh, live stream so obviously this is Games Workshop and Warhammer which is a 28mm scale miniatures game revolving around a science fiction universe the Warhammer 40,000 universe and a weird fantasy universe called Warhammer the Age of Sigmar 
which is an absolutely terrible background and I advise never trying to actually get into and understand, but the game itself plays all right. Warhammer 40,000, on the other hand, is probably one of the darkest universes that existed, um, but is not the darkest. Hunter of Nostromo says, when do you think next 30k model will be released by Forge World? Uh, probably something like the Contacar Terminators or the new Dark Angel Sword Boys in the next couple of weeks. Uh, if we're talking about the next book, 18 months. Hunter Nolan says, lack of release for Eldar is law friendly since they're a dying race. Mm, yeah, I suppose. Cold Shoulder says, I'm still upset that last year Forge World cut almost all the fantasy monsters. I've managed to get my hands on a fantasy basilisk, Dreadmore, and some skin wolves. I'm still after the Warpfire Dragon. Yep. I am with you on that. There are uh, plenty of recasts out there, but we won't go into that. Corb says, interesting. I'll be looking for the What Broke the Fans Eldar. Wanting to make an army for a while, but too much outdated sculpt slash resin. Yep. Moon Knight 1985 says, thinking about buying a, a knight for birthday, are they hard to put together? Mm, not really. Uh, the plastic knights are very easy to put together. The forge world ones, you've got to know how to work with resin. Because you will be having to heat it and bend it in some spots. And of course, cleaning it, filing it, all that kind of thing. Augustus says, mate, I have a bunch of old metal warbands. Got them through mates, but yes, keen for a game I know that's played in Adelaide too. I'm not in Adelaide, Cat is. Kat has played Mordheim before. Um, we played a game and it I think Kat was using Bretonians and it went really badly for him because I think I had a, a basically I was playing my orcs and had a, an orc fanatic or goblin fanatic uh, and he ball and chained his way straight through a group of knights and that was pretty much the first and only game of Mordheim we played at Kat's place. But our hearts just weren't in it. Chris Go ask, what is the darkest universe then? Ooh, uh Hellraiser universe, probably. It's pretty dark. Dreads dark too. Um Of course the Alien universe is there's never a happy ending in that place. There's pretty much some things you always know, which is if you're in an alien movie, something is stowed away on your ship at the end of the film. Um there's always going to be a shady android. What else? Uh, Wayland Utani addicts. There's a few things you can predict in those films. Um, holy oly. Um, holy o. Is that like corn holio from Beavis and Butthead? <laughs> what Union Horus Heresy lore would you like to see in model form that's missing? Also, being a White Scars fan, my choice is the fecking Garn. <laughs> um, I do think that... Obviously, the Atramenta for the Night Wards is a big one, but it would be nice to see the Raven Guard and Salamander's characters, and even little things like we don't have Forex for the Iron Warriors, we don't have uh, Gabriel Santos for the um, Iron Hands... Uh, there's no model for, uh, what's his face? I always forget, uh, the other Iron Hands character, Shadrach Medicine, doesn't have a model. So a lot of these, these people deserve models. Um, I don't care for Shuriken very much. Lucius, Lucius the Eternal, uh, or Captain Lucius as he is at this time, probably could deserve a model, so, yeah, I could pick a lot of models, but, hmm. What is my favourite automata? Um, looks wise or gameplay wise? I think for both it's probably going to be the Thousand Sun Castellax Achaia. Although, um, a good argument could be made for the Domitar Ferrum. So I'll bring them both up for people who are wondering. So the Domitar Ferrum are these guys and the. Castellax Achaia are these guys. 
So Domitar Ferrum, uh, Perturabo's personal bodyguard of Domitar that he just decided to make, as you do, after some Imperial Fist tried to raid his bedroom and steal his stash one day. So they're a really cool looking model. Because they've taken the Domitar, which is already cool, and made it better. Looking, that is. Uh, and of course Castellax Achaea because, hello, it's a freaking space wizard uh, Castellax. This thing is insanely cool. Plus, it's powered by crystal technology. If it's got chakra crystals, it must be good. Uh, August says, Hellraiser, great film, but Spawn Universe. Mm, Spawn Universe is pretty dark. Uh, if I have to watch the CG in the Spawn film for too long, that would hurt. Uh, except for the cloak. His cape uh, physics and that were really nice in the movie. Four Sleepers Union says, I was at the 40k event uh, House of War last year, upstairs with the dirty meta chasers, went downstairs, saw some heresy models in the flesh, blew my mind, so I started collecting a heresy force. That's great to hear. I myself frequent that venue. I don't know if they've closed due to the lockdown permanently or not, though. Uh, Dan Con says, Mouth of Badness is dank if you've not seen it. I'm a big John Carpenter fan, uh, Dan Con. Uh... Not just uh, Mouth of Madness, but obviously there's The Thing. Uh, they Live has the best knockdown drag out fight ever in a movie. Uh, for those who are curious, Google They Live uh, fight. And you see Rowdy Roddy Piper versus um, Keith David's character. And the two of them just beat the shit out of each other in an alley. <laughs> and it is fantastic. And it goes for like 10 minutes. And they really beat the shit out of each other. Um, what's the other one The John Carpenter? Prince of Darkness. Prince of Darkness is also really good. Uh, Venus Deletus. Just wondering about your thoughts on the Termakan, the Maggot Lord model. It was fantasy, but went OOP in December of 2019, and there are no recasters who sell him. I will have a look and figure that out. Uh, yeah, in the chat. Mac have put on the glasses. Just put on the glasses. I won't ask you. <laughs> yes, people know that fight. Uh, plus, one of the best quotes in any movie ever, when uh, he walks into the bank with the shotgun. I am here to chew bubblegum and kick some ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Pickle Rick asks, would like to see, or says, would like to see World Eater model of Captain Magos from the Book of Angron, Slave of New Syria. Uh, it's all about the Adj. The Adj is the guy we need. Cat knows who I'm talking about. The Adj. The Adj. Book 1, Horus Heresy. Uh, the Adjutant is one of the special characters. There's an Adjutant of, I think, 10th Company in Book 1 of the Horus Heresy is World Eater's special character. And the Adjutant in an actual military unit is essentially the discipline captain who is basically a paperwork bitch. So we find it really funny that the World Eater special character is essentially the paperwork bitch whose job is to write reports and tell soldiers they were naughty soldiers. Um, um, Holio says, Medicine would be good. Uh, good shout. And flesh out a uh, Shadow Legion campaign. And have multi-legion behind the lines punch-ups with rules on limited supplies, etc. Yeah. Vorkikus says, how do I feel about CanCon? I feel like they need to learn to use the air conditioning way more. Because every time I drop by that venue, I'm usually at Active Heresy. So I'm at a Heresy event, go out for lunch, and we drop in there just to have a look around. And last year, I swear to God, there was about 50 fucking traders selling gemstones, uh, like crystal healing bullshit and candles i'm thinking is this a miniature event or or crystals and incense it was a pain in the ass because i wanted to go there and go see like my old friends at the combat company booth and that and and buy some cool modeling accessories and yeah it didn't have that i mean it still had it but there was more people selling bloody stones and incense uh what are my thoughts on recasters uh I was going to say complex and numerous, but they're not really. Uh, recasters are providing an essential role in that they sell kits that Games Workshop has taken out of production for no good reason, and yet are often vital to certain characters or uh, legions or whatever. 
And on top of that, um, they also provide a lot of out of production models that you can never get your hands on otherwise. And they provide conversion accessories for a fair price. Uh, back in the day, you used to be able to go and say I wanted this plasma cannon this ether fire plasma cannon off the top of this Castellax. In the back in the day, that would have a part number and you could just mail order that particular part from Games Workshop. Now, if I wanted that particular part, I have to buy this whole model. So recasts are really good in that you can go buy that particular part and use it. And you don't waste the rest of the model doing so uh, and pay a lot of extra money too. Uh, where people go wrong is to say, well, if you're buying recasts, you're not supporting Games Workshop. I look at it and say, hang on, if I am look, if I have a person here, especially a low-income person, and they are going out and buying uh, recasts, if they buy just one legitimate product from the company, that is one product they were never going to buy, and the only reason they bought it is because they were buying recasts. So it goes both ways. Uh Jesse Johansson says, Artelius Numion for the Salamanders, please already forge drill. Yeah, it's another one they need. Fasty Boost, I'd love a model of Delvaris. I've suggested that for if they do a um, Shadow Crusade through Ultramar book, Black Book next. Uh, Chris Bico asks if I play Kingdom Death. Is it any good? I really like the minis, but damn, is an expensive game. Uh, no, I haven't. I believe Kimmel has. And I did see the models, and they were quite nice. Humongous, hey Maka, big fan. Thank you, Humongous. Uh, big fan of the name. Is that uh, based off that meme of that bloke who was saying his name was Humongous and that crazy uh, angry feminist chick went off at him that time? Because that was a pretty funny meme. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> I know my memes. I make enough low quality memes that I should know. Uh, that meme is eternal. I, I do love when... Me some memes write themselves. Like that one of um, Hillary Clinton with the worn-out donut, like the, the flogged-out donut that she's holding and the young chicks next to her with the really tight little <laughs> donut. <laughs> some memes write themselves. <laughs> For Kikas says, I buy recast myself and bought all the red books and even other black books. Over 330 Australian dollars... Just for all the red books is way too much. Yeah, it is. It's pretty unattainable, some of the costs. I have a friend in Rome called Biggest Dickus. Biggest Dickus. Augustus. More like Terminators for all. That would be cool. Crap. Should probably call myself Fruit Bat. <laughs> uh, yeah, Morlocks would be cool. I mean, the beauty of Morlocks is they can kind of be any of the Iron Hands Terminators, but you just kind of got to go to town on them. Rules for the elite Terminator bodyguards in all the legions will be good. There's no elite Terminators for the Raven Guard or for the Word Bearers at the moment. Uh, and the White Scars got the Ebon Keshi, which are not the bodyguard Terminators. They're just essentially almost destroyer Terminators, but armed entirely for close combat, which is a weird combination. But, you know, it's a thing. I've actually got three Assyrian Dreadnoughts. I've just got Thousand Suns on the screen, so I'll bring it up now while the chat's not too busy. I have three Assyrian Dreadnoughts, and I actually combined parts of Assyrian Dreadnoughts I bought from a recaster. Yes, I did. Parts of it. I combined them with the regular Contempted Dreadnought of Thousand Suns in order to create a much better looking Dreadnought. And the way I did it was... I used the old Ironclad term, uh, Dreadnought uh, Siege Wrecker. It's like a three drill power fist type thing. So I used that to create the right arm. I kept the force weapon on the left arm. And I kept essentially the lower half of the Assyrian and the Assyrian shoulders. But put the center torso and such off the normal Contemptor onto it. And is so much better looking. Um, as a model, I got to figure out a way that I can get a picture of it up online. We'll do it at some point, but yeah, it's a lot cleaner. That uh, center torso is so busy on the Assyrian; it really lets down. An otherwise, really nice miniature. 
Sloth Shuffle says, The Iron Circle is his favourite model, but the War of the Iron Warriors and Perturabo make me like them. Hmm. I really like the Iron Warriors. I, I would love to convince Cat to make an Iron Warriors army. Uh, he does like the Iron Warriors, so maybe it's possible. Tim from the Eye of Horus doesn't like Perturabo at all, although I don't think he's really given him a fair shake because he's only read... Uh, the Black Book, essentially, where Perturabo is just a massive dick, and the Battle of Fell and the Crimson Fist, which is, again, Perturabo is just a massive dick. So, and I think he read Angel Exterminatus but hated it, but Angel Exterminatus is a bit of a weird book in that regard. Perturabo, Primarch Novella, and I think it's, it's Slaves to Darkness, where he's the one who has to drag Angron kicking and screaming back to uh, Horus. Uh, Demon Angron? Yeah, that's that's Perturabo kicking all kicking all the ass. Venus Deletus, do you have any book recommendations for starting a 30k World Eaters or Death Guard army? Wanted to start for a while. Uh, the World Eaters best book is Betrayer. Uh, the Death Guard is a really tough one though, because I would say if you look at... You get some good glimpses into Mortarion's character in the Two White Scars novels. But it's a very brief time you're around them. Of course, Flight of the Eisenstein, you get quite a bit of Death Guard action in that. But they're mostly Loyalist Death Guard. And any other novel that covers the Death Guard, uh, from that point on, is their Death Guard heading towards the Siege of Terror. So they're going very chaosy, and they're not really the Death Guard at that Humongous says, Maka, do you think Argyle Tal will ever get a Horus Heresy model? He's my favourite character and my favourite Legion. I really would hope so. I think Argyle Tal and Delvaris are two models who definitely need to appear if they do a Shadow Crusade Black Book. And on top of that, I think Latara Saren should pop up in it. Even though she is technically a human uh, character, she is the captain of the Koreana flagship of the World Eaters Legion. She could be really cool as a... Seeing how you can take, like, navigators and such in a Heresy Marine army, being able to take her in a World Ears army as some sort of buff commander would be really cool and fluffy. Hipster Werewolf. Uh... Sorry, Mike Pence says, Pedro spending years making a model for the express purpose of smashing his brother in the face with it is the most rel relatable Primark story ever, to be honest. Yeah, Totally. Uh, Hipster Werewolf says, Have you encountered anybody playing modern games of 40k or 30k with Rogue Trader era miniatures? I used to run a Force of Space Marines my local gaming store, but they seem to dislike my use of biggies. Uh, I have seen people use them recently, um, and I had a friend do a sort of redo of that style. Um, James Keoghan from New Zealand has this really cool retro themed Blood Angels army where they're sort of like an orangey red instead of a red, and they've got the goblin green bases. Uh, and he's got the old school decals on the little backpack banners and stuff. It looks so nice, and nobody complains about that. Amy Clark says, as a long-term Iron Warriors player, I love Slaves of the Darkness. Yeah, it's great for the Iron Warriors, although the word bearers are kind of crap in it. Uh, Busty Boost, would you argue one of the better things about the Siege of Terror books is the fact that Perturabo is running the show? Yes, uh, because it's Perturabo doing his job of actually crushing his enemies, hearing the lamentations of the women. And, of course, seeing his enemies driven before him. Pickle Rick says, The Battle of Fell was such a joke. Massive Imperial Fist fapping fest for some upstart captain being up a goddamn Primark in a space battle. Uh, yes and no. It, it kind of works, but the problem is it's a John French book, and I argue the point all the time that John French is not a great writer. Uh, he's a perfectly serviceable writer, but he falls into these traps. Um, there, there are ways they talk about how screenplays and books are written, and he falls into the trap of the only way to make his guy look good is to make the other guy look incompetent or shit. And Disney is famous for this, because if anyone's ever watched the Mr. Plinkett review for Avatar, you'll understand. But what they're doing is taking something like a character's face, if it's Disney... And they give them, you know, the big puppy dog eyes and that kind of thing. And immediately you, like, uh, you feel closer to the character. Oh, I love that character. Oh, you know, because they've just got a sympathetic face. 
and the bad guys usually have these the jutting uh, sharp jaws furrowed brow beady little eyes and it's like a subconscious thing and and that is good character design but if you're relying on the character design to tell the audience that they're a bad character as opposed to their actions it's not a good thing and in john french books the way he makes he just seems to hate the iron warriors and perturabo so uh, he's the guy who came up with the idea of the decimation as far as i know because i believe he wrote the entire i warriors section of book three's black book where perturabo just executes his own legion and such and that was him um so the way that he makes the imperial fist look better is not by the Imperial Fist doing a better job, but by making his enemy mustache twirling and incompetent. Uh, Perturabo is like the husband in Titanic, or the the character in Titanic who goes around just being a dick uh, to Kate Winslet and like beating her. Super chat from Tunguska, who says. Uh, John French used the Alpha Legion as a punching bag, then wrote them out of the heresy. Don't forget that. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. Uh, it's such a John French move, right? Uh, Dragon Ball says, which Legion out of Death Guard or Iron Warriors would fit with Dreadnoughts more? I can't decide between them. Uh, Rules-wise, you get a lot more out of Dreadnoughts in a Iron Warriors army, because they'll come with uh, free extra armor depending on your art of war and you can take more heavy slots so more leviathans more derideos always cool uh, and if you have an i warriors praetor you can give him a servo arm which means he can go around repairing your dreadnoughts so there's a lot of ways that you can sort of synchronize Business Rock Man says, Hey, remember when Empress Children Captains tried to sodomize the demon out of Fulgrim and now Nemiel got killed out of nowhere in the same book? What's the Black Library and things like that? <laughs> I'll have to give some background to the people. Uh, so, uh, the Empress Children, in a short story, realize that Fulgrim has a demon in him. So Lucius convinces a whole bunch of the other captains and Fabius that we need to get this demon out of him. So they ambush him. Fulgrim kills a couple of them, but he's unarmored and armed at the time. And they, they come in, and one of the captains is literally just fist-pumping Fulgrim in the face of the power fist to try and knock him out. And um, they eventually do it, and then they strap him down on a surgical table and stick a giant dildo up uh, his ass. Basically. It's actually worse than that. It's kind of like the sp uh, speculum that they use for female exams. Um but it's like four-sided and apparently balloons up huge. Uh, yeah, what a weird short story. And then Fulgrim apparently is um, very happy and enjoys the experience, so don't even ask me about why they made that short story. Uh, and Nemuel is a chaplain of the Dark Angels, who we spend a lot of time with in the first couple of Dark Angels books, um, who is the cousin, I believe? of Zahariel, who's the librarian, who's the main antagonist, or protagonist, I should say, in those books. And then in the short story, in like the first chapter, the Dark Angels get sucked into a into the warp because a Nightlord ship basically self-destructs deliberately next to them, opening a warp rift and vortexes them into the warp, and they don't have any gala fields up, so demons start invading all over the ship, and... The lion quickly figures out, hey, librarians are the perfect thing to kill these demons. This chaplain then turns around and is like, no, the emperor said you can't do that. So the lion just cuts his head off. <laughs> and that's that story. Uh, why does Black Library do that? Because they try and shock the audience, Game of Thrones style. They're like, oh, uh, we need a good twist, we need a good twist. Um, um, uh... Such and such who you really like dies. <gasps> Shock. Yeah, it's not great. Not a good way to write. Uh, this is coming from a guy who is not an author, by the way. So feel free to absolutely criticize the shit out of me. It would be very hypocritical of me to criticize everyone else and not be able to take it. George A.P. Guayla says, Do you think the corpse grinder cult from Necromunda would make a solid 30k militia levy? Also, 8th point ward as a discipline master. Uh, yeah, of course they would. When it comes to militia, you can pretty much do anything you like and it will probably work. Uh, Will Driver says, there is nothing good about the Siege of Terror books. 
No. They're they're season eight Game of Thrones in it. They're just getting it to the finish line so they can move on and write something else. Mike Pence says, Do you think that French style of writing is incompetence or is it a deliberate stylistic choice? Incompetence. <laughs> uh, pure and simple. Because you can take the time to flesh out those characters and make Pollock's uh, better easily enough. Uh, he just writes in a way that uh, is easiest and quickest, which is to make the other guy just seem like a dick. Uh, Sergeant Sucky Dick says they should... Oh, sorry, Sucky Duck. <laughs> oh, they should uh, bring back Lionel Johnson. Oh, uh, yeah, he would be good to fit into modern 40k, but I think he gets along too well with Gilliman. Um, I still think Korax coming back would be better out of the early Primarchs because Korax is ideologically a very predisposed to not liking Primaris. So it would be a great way to balance the fact that Primaris are in every army right now and being really pushed in the fluff to have a guy who's like, no, I don't accept Primaris, I don't like them. And then he could go off into the far half, the Imperium Nihilus, and take over from Dante as the Primarch and lead that section of the galaxy and run his own Shadow Empire very differently to how Gilliman runs the uh, primary uh, Imperium on the other side of the rift. Hunting Freeman says, so wait, why do they keep all these writers make books um, around factions they have grudges against? Uh, Because they're the stuff they've got, and well, think of it this way. Phil Kelly really likes Tyranids, so they get him to write Chaos Demons and Chaos Space Marines, and the books always suck. Uh, What's his face? Uh, Fuck me. Uh, Robin Crudus. Massive Imperial Guard fan. Big treadhead. He wrote Tyranids. So you've got guys who aren't writing the factions they like and they cock it up. It's just a thing that happens. Uh, It's the incompetence of the company. I don't know how to say it. Busty Boost says, So the Captain Punching Fulgrim was probably thinking like Tony Stark in the Avengers film versus the Hulk. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep over and over. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Daniel Bateman, yeah, I thought it was very out of character for the line to behead one of his little brothers. It was. It was just a silly little short story. Hunting Freeman says, There is no reason to season 8 the Siege of Terror. It's possibly one of the most important pieces of lore in 30k, 40k. Yeah, but you got to understand, the people writing it are like the D.B. Weiss and David Benioff, the two Game of Thrones showrunners. They think their shit don't stink. They think they're doing an excellent job. And the problem is, is the people who do the reviews and such on these books, just like the people right now saying Book 9 is the greatest book ever, they're coming out and reviewing it from a standpoint of someone who is massively excited for the product as opposed to an objective critic. And so naturally they're giving it two thumbs up, huge amounts of praise because it's what they want. They want it to be good and they're emotionally invested in it. So they're in a feedback loop of, Everything you do is great. You're a great author. Oh my god, I love you. And so that's what they keep doing. Chris Pico says, Do you think they'll pull some surprise twists with the Emperor versus Horace Jewel? Hmm. Mm, it's too iconic to change up much, but they could. I wouldn't put it past them. Eh, I don't know. I'd have to think on that. They might do something dumb. S says, if they wrote for the factions they like, then maybe we'd end up with some Matt Wardisms. That's the opposite end of the spectrum. Could happen. Another uh, $5 super chat from Tunguska. Wasn't there an Imperial Armor book where Elysians are in a Turinid Jurassic Park, or did I fever dream that? Uh, you might have fever dreamt that. I don't remember that book. I remember the Bad Ab Wars, the Siege of Vrax. Um, they were all really good books. Uh, Orphelion, I think it was, is another one, which was the uh, Minotaurs chapter versus Necrons, or Fall of Orpheus, something like that. They were pretty good. 
Uh, yeah, I don't remember Elysians and Tyranids, Jurassic Park. Maybe. That'd be a cool story. I'd watch that. Busty Boost says, I love how Josh Reynolds writes his books. Everyone is a hero in their own story. The Apocalypse book is really good to show the word bearers, and his Fabius Bile trilogy I, trilogy I highly recommend. Hm, there you go. Will Driver says, The Anfelion Project. Huh. So that was uh, Lysians and Tyranids. Okay. Jay Dizzle says, I like to think they might make Horace Aximand the one to lower the shields. Hmm, that would be interesting. Hunty Freeman says, It's heartbreaking. Horus vs. Emperor is one of my favourite scenes. It holds an almost mythical level of awe slash mystery around it. With how the writing is going, it's going to suck. I'd hate to think that. See, my problem with um, the Emperor vs. Horus, I'm worried it's going to turn into a Revenge of the Sith with um, the Emperor and Horus. I have the high ground type thing where the idea of Darth Vader and Obi-Wan dueling on a lava planet is so cool in your head and then when you see it, it doesn't live up to it because it goes for like 20 minutes and after the first three minutes, you're no longer invested in it. Botzors says, My headcanon is that the line is already mildly corrupted by Zinch, but through force of will, he stays loyal. Um, no, actually. He has a conversation with, I, I think it's the Fate Weaver. It's definitely a great, uh, de- a greater demon of Zinch. And it discovers that it actually has nothing to offer him. The line is completely uninterested. And the demon is actually surprised that it actually has no way it can turn the line to its side. So, because the line is, you've got to remember, he's the closest to the Emperor in terms of his genetic makeup. Uh, the least deviated from the Emperor's design. So he probably has the most personality like the Emperor in that regard. And so he's completely against Chaos on probably a genetic level. Amy says Enfelion was Nids. There you go. Um, Holio says they will give the Emperor tits the woke shock factor saying the Emperor was the father and mother in one hit. Uh, uh, no, I don't think they'll do that. Uh, the company is not that kind of woke level or anything like that yet. Humongous asks, hey Macker, have you been painting anything cool this week? I actually just finished building today and um, putting the textured paint on their bases. Six Charonite Ogrens, which are freaking huge uh i will try and pull up a picture of them armies of the imperium solar auxilia i bought them after book five and i thought these are really expensive models right uh because because of like i say i bought them after book five uh, because i was going to build a prospero spy gun army started working on a squad of flamers and then said man there's a lot of detail and such i really can't be fucked and put them back in the box and they sat in a box for a good seven or eight years gathering dust in my shed until i pulled them out a few weeks ago and started actually putting energy into working on them i remember complaining because i think that at the time this is pre four job price rise it was something like a hundred or 110 dollars uh, not the 160 you're seeing now to buy this unit. And I bought two squads of three to make into one big squad of six. So I pulled them out, started building them. These guys are the size of Castellax. Those are not 40 mil bases they're on. Those are 50 millimeter bases these Ogrens are on. I will scroll through the pictures and we might actually find a picture of some next to... No, we got we haven't got a picture of them next to someone else. Okay. All you need to know is if... This is next to a Castellax. The little dome on the backpack actually is slightly taller than the Castellax. These guys are huge. Uh, So I've built six of those, based them, and I've base coated them, ready to start properly painting them. That's what I've done lately. Misanthrop Man says, If Abnett doesn't write the final Horus Heresy book, we write. Abnett had started it and he should end it. I think Dan Abnett also wrote the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. So that's a thing. But of course, uh, as Busty Boost says, considering Abnett is responsible for the Saturn 9 novel, I hope he gets it, but he doesn't fuck it up as bad as he did in Saturn 9. 
A 17. Yeah, they are big fucking boys, these models. Uh, also, ha hats off to them, because uh, these were, I think, one of the last units sculpted by Edgar Skoromowski for Forge World. Uh, he created the Ogrens and the Solar Auxilia for himself as a fun little project, so the story goes. Um, he wanted to make his own cool faction when he was learning to 3D sculpt, and he came up with the Solar Auxilia, and Forge World saw them and said, man, let's put that into production. And so he ended up with this faction, uh, which are all hyper-detailed and such, and to this day he still does some really cool like sculpts for himself, which he occasionally shows off on like Facebook. Anyway... Um, the Charonite Ogrens are one of the best kits I've ever built because the legs are one piece up to the waist and then the torso is a single piece which is square pegged uh, to the base so really easy to fit together, just slots straight together. Then you have the big sort of um, plates that go over the shoulders, uh, the harness for the backpack there's one for each side and they're all numbered so you know exactly which one goes on which torso of which model uh, it's just all the parts for two go on two the parts for one go on one the parts for three go on three so you put those on then the arms are each one piece including the cables and the cables just slot straight into a little hole in the backpack around the back there was no need to bend them or reshape them or anything like that i was like holy crap these things have sat in the box for years out in the shed and they still fit together you know, there was no warping or anything. Holy crap. Then you've got the hands. The hands are a separate piece that glue onto that. And, of course, the heads are one piece as well. And the only fiddly bit was the two little cables that hook from the backpack around and hook up to the gas mask on the Ogrens. So I'll show you the bit I'm talking about. This little cable here. But that little cable is also numbered exactly to the model and perfectly fits that particular torso. And it is the one that plugs in here. And it fits straight into place. You don't have to bend it, heat it or anything. So all the different cables and everything in this model sorted straight in. One of the best kits I've ever built. And this really goes to show what can be done with 3D sculpts if you do it correctly. Because a lot of people seem to think I hate uh, digital sculpting. I don't. What I hate is people who use digital sculpting and use the resources poorly. They take a pre-existing asset and they just start slapping it on like you see with all those space marine tanks where they're big grav tanks, they've got 400 stubbers on them, for instance. They don't need it, they've just added all this crap on because they had it lying there in a file and it was so easy to click and drag it over that they didn't ask themselves, should I do this? That's where I get shitty. It's not even shitty, just uh, more a case of I'm disappointed because I think you've ruined an otherwise fantastic model. Hunting Freeman says, speaking of Saturnine, what do you think of the change from the Emperor's plan from humanity in the webway to all humans perpetual? Yeah, it's don't, no, nah, dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb. Just like the whole um, perpetual and cabal thread in general, it's silly. It doesn't add anything to the story for having it. Uh, adding something for the sake of it is not great. Luke Norris asks, what are the best weapons for Thalax cohort? Depends what you're trying to achieve, but I think a photon thruster is generally the best, uh, and heavy chain blades is always good on them because they are very strong with heavy chain blades. Um, but yeah, probably the photon thruster because you can kill vehicles with it. Multi melter is good, but you've got to get close, and also there's a lot of armored ceramide on the vehicles you want to be killing. Photon thruster is more reliable in that regard. Uh, the phase plasma fusel is also pretty good. Pickle Rick says, Solar Auxiliary is a really nice looking army, but price, the amount of those is something that uh, would dread to start. A lot of people say that, but let's look at the Solar Auxilia now. If you buy something like that Solar Auxilia dro uh, Strike Force there, that's a lot of money, yes, but you could cheap it out. You could get a couple of Valataris sections, say three Valataris sections, maybe two with Volkites, one with Axes like I have. Even under the current prices, that's 300 bucks. Then get uh, three Drakosan transports for them. That's going to hurt your pocket. 
But if you do that, that's already like your first thousand points sorted. And then you can fill out the rest of the army with, oh, you could go even just Baneblade chassis variants. It doesn't have to be the Stormhammer. It could be a Baneblade, um, Doomhammer, any of those kind of things. Um, get your HQ, maybe maybe an artillery tank squadron, and you'll easily get to like 3,000 points. In fact, uh, I'll tell you my 3,000 point list right now. Uh, three Lehman Russ incinerators. That's these ones with the uh, big Volkite carronade on top, which is not a great weapon, but I think it's cool. It's why I'm using it. Uh, three of those, three Aurochs, three Draco San, two of which have demolisher cannons. One is the Twin Laz cannon. Two 10 man Valtaris Volkite squads. 10-man Valtaris Parax squad, 10-man Solrox Flame section, 20-man Laz Rifle section, Tactical Command squad, and uh, Ward Marshal. And, uh, oh, and the uh, Tech Priest Auxilia, two of him with eight Servitors with the grenade launchers. And alongside that, three Darkfire Castellacs. And that's it, that's 3,000 points. Oh, oh, sorry, I forget one thing. Uh, tank commander with a Veldor tank hunter. Uh, Busty Boost says, any recommendations for CAD software for miniatures? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, I have a couple of programs running in the background. Let me just... Uh, Autodesk Fusion 360 is the one I use to do stuff in. So that's that's one right there you can use. There you go. And that's pretty good, pretty user friendly. Uh, it is free for like a year, I think, and then you gotta pay for it. So yeah. Misanthrop Man says, Polish quality. When we do something, we do it right. Solar Auxilia has more love and care pointed with the entire Specialist Games lines. You know, I really like Edgar Skoromowski's work. Uh, he's done multiple different games, including a lot of stuff for Cool Mini or not, and very rarely has he made anything that disappoints me. I think the biggest crime he ever committed was not giving Mortarian his, his um, real rebreather mask, and that's it dude is a very gifted sculptor and has a very bright future ahead of him. S says, speaking of gun platform grav tanks, according to leaks, they're getting a buff. No surprise there. Hmm. Of course. Humongous says, don't forget how much money you save when buying your whole solar auxiliary army from Resin Daddy, aka Recaster. Suka blit, comrade. <laughs> Pickle Rick says, upon latest leak for Repulsor Executioner, Heavy Laser Destroyer becoming Strength 12, minus 4 AP, and D3 plus 3 damage. Old stats were Strength 10, minus 4 AP, and D6, with 1, 2, and 3 counters, minimum of 3 damage. Hmm. Okay. Along with the Gatling Gun going to Strength 6, and Twin Heavy Stubber going to Heavy 8. Eh, <laughs> stupid. See, it amazes me, 40k, because you'll hit 30k tanks like, say, the Lehman Russ Incinerator here. It has a Laz Cannon and the Volkart Carronade, and that's, like, pushing the limits of how many guns it can take. Maybe you can give, in, say, Militia, for instance, you can give it side sponsons on the Lehman Russ. But pretty much the hull is at its limit. But for some reason in 40k, like, even in the Carnadon or Predator chassis, it's like two side sponsons and a turret, and they're like, okay, that's, that's about it. We can put something on the Pintle... But there's literally all the guns we can fit on a tank. And then you go to 40k, and you go to the Space Marines, and then you see... When I scroll down to it... Oh, so much shit to scroll through. Space Marine line is too big. And then you get to this crap here. Well, the Primaris Repulsor. I'll open up the Repulsor in one tab, but I'll also go up to the Razorback because the Razorback is saying that you have a five model transport capacity 
in the Razorback, or sorry, six models, after you go from the Rhino to just a twin-linked heavy bolter on top. This tiny little heavy bolter, the ammunition and such, takes up so much space in the vehicle that you have to take out dudes. But then for some reason, you go to this thing, which somehow has to not only have transport capacity inside its hull, but it has to have the fuel and the generators to power not just the big engines at the back with these turbines, but all this grav paneling, which fills up the entire underside of the tank, and you would imagine it takes up quite a lot of internal space, because the whole reason grav tech um, is not as widely utilized is not just because it's hard for humans to understand, but because, you know, it's a very power, energy intensive, all that kind of stuff. It takes up a lot of space, and you go, okay, if it's got that, and it's also got a, a full-size Predator turret on top. Uh, it's in fact, slightly bigger than a Predator's turret. And it's got all the ammo for it. And it's got a twin glass cannon in the hull. How does this thing still have anything approaching a decent transport capacity, especially with the bigger Primaris Marines? And of course, that's where your suspension of disbelief comes in, because much as I like the game and understand that, okay, it's a science fiction universe and science fiction things can, un can happen, this the Razorback, already set the rules for this universe. And the rules say a rhino-sized vehicle with a tiny little twin heavy bolter loses a heap of transport capacity. And so if you extrapolate that up to something like this, it would lose a shitload of transport capacity. And then on top of that, you've got to remember, the uh, Land Raider, the Crusader, had more transport capacity because it didn't have all that internal volume taken up by the giant LAS cannons or fuel tanks for the Redeemer for its flamers. And so the Crusader had a slightly increased troop capacity, but just two twin LAS cannons dramatically cut down the Land Raider's transport capacity. And the Land Raider, it's got just conventional engine and tracks on it. It doesn't have to have all this extra grav shit and the navigation and the gyroscopes to balance the tank that, that would come with grav technology. But here we are. It's uncanny. Hunting Freeman says, Would it be easy to run Solar Auxilia as 40k guard? I've always been tempted to start an army, but I don't want to put a beautiful army just for Horus Heresy since it isn't really played in my area. Um, yeah, it is pretty easy to switch them over. There are some things like the Melkadors. You can run a few Melic Relkadors and the Relic Stormhammer and such. Um, it's doable. Draco Sans, you'd have to run them as a Chimera, and they're way too big for that because they are a Melkador chassis. So they're probably 50% too big to run as a Chimera. Um, the Aurox would work well as a Chimera, especially if you had an Aurox, uh, the Carnadon battle tank, sorry. Uh, because it's got the turret on top, you could use it as a Chimera turret. It doesn't matter that it's got sponsons on the sides because the Chimera doesn't have side access hatches. So that would work. Uh, you couldn't use the Lehman Rust Incinerator, but you could use any of the other Rust variants. Uh, the Flamer section, you could put uh, a couple of Flamers into your LAS Rifle squads in order to make them into 40k Canadian, uh, Canadian Cadian units. Um, the Tactical Command Squad perfectly would sync up with a Guard Command Squad. The Velotaris Storm section, maybe not so much. Um, with the power axes, but the Volkite ones, you could probably use them as counts as plasma guns, as like plasma veterans or something. That's definitely something you could try and do. Um, the artillery tanks, technically they're on a Lehman Rust chassis, not a Chimera chassis, but I don't think anyone would argue the point if you, I mean, clearly they're Medusas and Basilisks. Uh, and the Charonite Ogrens, you could use them as Ogrens, although they're a lot bigger than a regular Ogren. A regular Ogren probably comes up to their chin. Uh, even the Bulgrins. But you could use them. So yeah, I think you could pretty much get away with it, but you'd be mixing up the army a little bit to do so, like moving single models from the Flamer squads into Laz Rifle sections, for instance. S says, even with all those guns, the Repulsor Executioner can still transport units like a Radica. Yeah, it's silly. Botzord says, where's the engine, the repulsor thingy? The more you try to think about the interior, the worse it gets. Yep. <laughs> Emperor Trudeau's Canadian Guard. Trudeau doesn't have the uh, testicular fortitude to be an emperor. Especially not the emperor of mankind, because he is a stone-cold bastard. 
Hunting Freeman says, using Chad Ogrens to intimidate the enemy. Hey, Soul Auxilia Ogrens are not just Chad Ogrens. Uh, they're the type of Chad Ogren that uh, chew out your bicep uh, when you try and have a go at them with your skateboard, bro. Uh, we're talking Strength 6, I believe, with uh, AP3 weapons, which on a 6 to wound become AP2 off the top of my head, the uh, Charonite Ogren's weapons. So they absolutely shred even Terminators, uh, especially Power Armor Marines, but yeah. Brutal. Trudeau is a fanboy sociopath. Uh, D2017. The thing is, uh, Trudeau, like most modern leaders, lacks testicular fortitude because none of the modern leaders we have have ever had to live through extremely hard times uh, in Western society. Like, okay, you got Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth, which for all their faults, at least, like, Queen Elizabeth and Philip both fought in World War II. Like, Philip was actually serving... Uh, crazy crazy old Prince Philip was serving on destroyers and cruisers in the Mediterranean, which was a pretty hellish theatre to actually fight in, because the Italians and the Germans really, really were doing their best to sink the Royal Navy. Uh, unfortunately, the Regia Marina, the Italian Navy, was just not up to the task, because fucking War Spite was there. Um... Again, War Spite, the greatest ship of all time. Um, but yeah, he fought in that theatre. Whereas most politicians today have never known anything outside of growing up in suburbia. There are obviously some like you know, Dan Crenshaw over in the US, uh, I think he's a Texan senator who's a combat veteran. Like, There's people like that out there, but they're definitely not the norm, and it's going to be a long time before people like him are actually people who are in power. There is a lot of high up government people in that sort of age 50 to 70 bracket which are not going to move anywhere fast. Busty Boo says, Thanks, thank God our Prime Minister has a stable government that won't have a leadership spill like the last four. Well, we'll see. Rudd had a stable government too the first two years. Yeah. Anyway, stay away from politics. It's cancerous. <laughs> uh, I reckon we wrap this up here, guys. I think we've had a pretty good uh, show, a pretty good episode. Uh, even ignoring the politics at the very end there. We've talked about a lot of different topics. So uh, we'll throw in any last questions you've got right now. And um, we'll do about another seven minutes or so. It takes up to an even two and a half hours. And uh, if you really want your question answered, now's the time to do it. And we'll call it there. Don't mind me, I'm just enjoying a beer. Uh, it is Great Northerns today. How's your doggo? My doggos are great. Uh, they're going a bit crazy though because all our endless lockdowns, I can't really take them anywhere and do all the fun stuff like uh, the duck hunting, bird hunting season this year was just gone. Uh, and so the young, the young fella, Hunter, he, yes, that is his name, Hunter, and he's a hunting dog. He uh, didn't get a chance to really go out and get many birds. Uh, in fact, we didn't shoot any this year. We did go hunting uh, in the field twice with him, but just got nothing. Uh, just very windy days, and he's still learning, so he wasn't very good at actually spotting uh, the birds, which kind of sucked, especially because I got a new shotgun that sent me back nearly two grand. It is a beautiful shotgun. Uh, yeah... Do I think the Empress children will get a plastic range? Eventually, the question is, what do they do with the plastics? Hmm. Venus Deletus asks, what's the recommended daily salt intake? Uh, well, you need some every day. I'd say the point where your arteries stop pumping blood effectively is probably too much. S asks, am I a fan of German beer? Yes, I am a fan of German beer. I'm a fan of pretty much all beer though uh there was once an indian pale ale i had which has absolutely nothing to do with india uh which was truly disgusting but that is it that is one beer out of 20 years of beer drinking that i've disliked so yeah pickle rick says pulled yesterday new chaos space marines transfer sheet really weird now place to find thousand suns there considering of their legion curse since everyone with thousand suns gene seed turned into rubric 
Well, do you remember, it's not the Thousand Suns Legion iconography they have, it's just generic Zench iconography they have. It's not the Oribus, technically, the old school white uh, pointy star Oribus they have. People can join the Thousand Suns forces, they're just not technically Thousand Suns. Uh, J Dizzle says, do you think Storm Eagles are worth it for units like Seekers in Angel's Wrath Force? Yes, they are very strong, um, but you're not using them, you're only taking them in order to get Seekers on the board. Uh, Storm Eagles are great because you put two glass cannons and a multi-melter on, you go around hunting tanks with it, and high profile infantry like Terminators, and you use the power of the machine spirit to fire the pie plates off into squads of enemy infantry. That's what Storm Eagles do well. Dancon asks, Custodes, Sisters of Silence, and Custodes, Dreads, and Alarm Raider in the Horus Heresy book. But's too small. Now will the narrative do 180s like this in the future? That's weird phrasing. I'm not fully with you there. Uh, D2017 asks, What do you hunt with dogs where you live? You're birding. What else can you hunt there? Oh, I can hunt pretty much anything except native fauna. Uh, and I'm not currently licensed to hunt duck. I'm hunting quail. Um, I don't tend to take the dogs with me if I'm going for foxes or rabbits. Uh, and if I'm going for deer, I haven't taken either of the dogs for deer yet. Uh, but I'm not shooting the deer with shotgun, I'm using my 303 for that. Um, Holyo says he's fuck, he just spent five minutes shaving a Necron head to fit a Tomb King's headdress and dropped it. Mac, have you seen where it's gone? Uh, just over there on the left. Luke Norris says, even ginger beer. Ginger beer is not beer. It's just a name. Like when someone says menthol cigarettes. They're not cigarettes, they're menthol. How do you think jet bikes work in the Blood Angels army? Really, really well. Um, but not because of the Blood Angels, but because jet bikes are just good. Harry S says they'll re-release first ball marines upscaled or not squatting like they did with Space Marine Heroes Alliance to the same height as New Cow Space Marines like Coke did with bringing back classic Coke. Eh, I wouldn't bet on it. Dancon says, Sporter 202 or World War II spec? Or 303. Uh, number four, Mark I Star, made by Savage Arms, the United States, 1942. Uh, fantastic with the two position, uh, 300 meter, 600 meter aperture on it. Uh, I am a 303 connoisseur, and I know pretty much everything there is to know about 303s through a long line of extensive research and I am looking at getting a number five jungle carbine next uh, do I remember the Thunderhawk transporter Gilpie asks that uh, transports two rhinos or one land raiders because I was looking forward to getting a couple but they don't exist anymore yeah no I don't know where to get one from I don't think I've seen them at recasters uh, but I do very much remember them um, they also were really cool in old school epic uh, and they were big in book one there's actually pictures in book one of them so, work that out. Daniel Bateman says, uh, If you or anyone like Scotch, look up SMWS. You need a membership, but you can get all the single cask Scotch you like. Hmm, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, personally, a Glen Moringer Quinta Reuben is my current favourite Scotch. Uh, has been for about eight years now, so clearly is a good Scotch. It's 12 year, uh, aged for the last two years in Spanish port casks. So it takes a heap of that port flavour in. They do apparently also make a 14-year, um, which one of my friends in Canada was pointing out, and I really want to get onto that, but I can't find it here in Australia, so ooh, I do really want to. It'll be pricey, though, and Australia has big tariffs on importing grog. Busty Boost wants to know if I put on the glasses. No, you dirty motherfucker. you got to beat me up more if you want me to put on the glasses. looking to get a Ruger Scout in 308 I'm a sucker for aesthetics yeah it's a pretty good rifle and 308's a very reliable caliber Glen Moringer is quality my favourite distillery is Jura but they're overpriced yeah yeah they are nice actually I have had some before uh, Pickle Rick asks would Stormhound be considered relic in 40k era I'm sure it would have rules somewhere uh, it depends if Forge will get off there asking got up their ass and actually wrote the rules for 40k and uh, 
Thunderhawk Transporter can take Land Raiders, but not Primaris. Nice. Yeah, it's dumb. Anyway, thanks all for coming on to the stream, guys. And uh, it's been fun. I love doing these streams. I love chatting to everyone. But uh, they do have to end eventually. Um, but hopefully I'll do one as many weekends of the year as I can uh, in place of the scrub down. Kat and I are talking about doing a live stream where we're both here in future, so we'll see if we can make it happen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.